so that I just so that I don't forget. Okay. Oh, let's um, see. Yeah, you should be you should be good now. All you have to do is the YouTube and you got everything else on there. Oh wait, should I be using Hey Joey, Dana, Karen, everyone. Hello. Hey Jesse. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday. My days are all mixed up. Hey Jesse, when I start the YouTube live stream, is there a specific user I should be logging into with? Uh, it should just be your uh, personal, actually. Um, Is it? Okay. I wasn't sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're like a man, it's weird. Like you're a manager of the Hack Up State channel. So like you'll authenticate through like your personal. Um, and it's, okay. Okay. that makes sense. It's, it's weird. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. I, I, it's not going to show up on my personal YouTube yeah, account, right? That's, okay, good. I thought the same exact <laughs> thing when I was doing it the first time. Uh, yeah, no one's going to find it then. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Joy. Uh, looks like it is starting up right now. It says live on YouTube. Sweet. On my side. All right, I can close that browser out, right? Yeah, like, Wait a minute. Yep. Yeah, because it's just going to be. All right. Cool. I'll be starting announcements in just a minute. Just want to make sure my phone is off. Cool. Thanks, Dan. No problem. Got to get used to having an iPhone. It's really, really loud. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We got. Okay, so um, Joey, I know you have a lot that you wanna teach in this module. So, I mean, if it's okay with everyone, I'll go ahead and get started with announcements. Yeah, that sounds good, Dana. Okay. Everything up here. Okay, so happy Tuesday, everyone. I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday weekend. I know I did, even though the weather was a little gloomy, but that's besides the point. It was nice to have an extra day off. So um, today we start module six, week number 12. And this mod in this module, we're going to cover React. And your instructor for this module is Joey. And Joey, if you just want to go ahead and say hello. It's probably waving. I can't see the chat right now, but um. Hello. I am Joey, <laughs> the one they say. <laughs> and this module actually covers three weeks. So um, this is week number 12, and it'll cover week 13 and also 14. Our teaching assistant for this module to get us started with uh, this week will be Karen Thorne. And then uh, Caitlin uh, Warboy, Warboy, who was one of your previous instructors, she'll be the teaching assistant, assistant for week 13 and 14. We're excited because we have a guest speaker coming up on June the 7th will be Mr. Joshua Maris. And on June the 14th will be uh, Miss Annalena Davis. And so uh, because of, of the uh, guest speaker on the 14th, we're actually moving your demo day uh, to the following day, uh, Tuesday, June the 15th. So go ahead and make sure that you mark your calendars for that. Demo day will not be on the 14th, it will be on the 15th. And please plan to be on time for um, our guest speakers. Um, so with that being said, today is your scheduled uh, capstone demo day. And uh, just a reminder of what you should talk about, please share your ideas, your statuses, updates, thoughts, your questions, concerns, problems, solved lessons learned, and of course, a demo of your progress thus far and anything that you'd like to share with the class on your project. 
Also another a reminder that you'll have two minutes to speak and we will have a hard stop at two minutes for each person. And I'll be keeping a timer um, and uh, the timer will be to let me know um, if you're done. So um, following everyone's updates, we will uh, provide another five minutes for any outstanding, uh, outstanding questions, thoughts or feedback. So um, what, what we recommend is the usual one minute for your ideas, statuses, updates, thoughts, questions, problem solved, lessons learned, and then an additional minute if you'd like to share your screen, if you have something that you'd like to demo. And this can be a feature of your project through Trello, uh, your code, wireframes, mockups, web pages, et cetera. And what we'd like to hear from you is um, what you've done since your last update, what you're currently working on, what's coming up for your next uh, for the next part of your project we'd also like to hear if you have had any major problems roadblocks roadblocks or challenges and also what's your biggest takeaway for this uh, uh portion of your capstone uh we also want to remind you that while your classmates are presenting to please complete the peer review form to provide them with feedback uh, on their capstone projects. And we'll make sure that we get that link uh, copied and pasted over into the, the Zoom chat for you and Slack for easy access. And, um, and if you wanna submit this later after class, that's okay. In addition, if you want to um, review your submissions, we'll also uh, provide the link for that. So, um, we recommend um, at this time that you should be interfacing with a simple API as a part of your project. And over the next three weeks, please start thinking about how you might be able to utilize React in your project. By June the 21st, we'd recommend incorporating React into your project in some capacity, um, if, you know, if you're able to do that. So, um, We'll go ahead and get started with the presentations, unless, Jesse, unless there's anything else that you'd like to add at this point. Thanks, Dana. Um, go ahead and okay. get started off whenever you're able. Okay, then. All right, so <clears throat> we will go ahead and get started with um, uh, Ariel. And after Ariel, uh, Brandy, you'll go next. Is uh, Ariel in class today? Okay. I don't see her. I don't see Ariel in the chat, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. then uh, if she comes, if I if I don't notice that she's here, um, someone can just let me know. So we'll move on to the next person on the list, which is Brandy. Hi, everyone. Um, I haven't done much since the last demo day, but I'll share my screen. I was fixated on other things, but I was tuned into, what am I doing? I was tuned into a um, JS, something called Glide JS. I wanted to incorporate a Glide feature for my sections. I worked on it with Max and I broke something but I want to figure out what it was. This is what my glide looks like right now. Um, there's that, and I fixed the breakpoints on extra small for all of my rows. Going forward, I want to incorporate more JS into my page if possible and bring in more si styles and some card features that I was thinking of. That's where I'm at right now in my capstone. That's all I have today. Dana, I think you're talking on mute, Dana. I'm sorry, Brandy, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, next we have on deck, one moment please. Okay, we have uh, Carolyn next and on deck we have Dominique Wynn. 
Carolyn, you can go ahead and present. Thanks, Dana. Um, I have to be honest, I was hoping I'd have something more impressive to show today. It's all up here, but I'm quite frankly overwhelmed by everything. <laughs> Um, still trying to get caught up with work from Ryan. Um, and then I found a bunch of files had disappeared. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of file management. I guess that counts. Um, so I don't really have anything different to show, um, except I did post everything to Slack last time so people could see the screenshots because I was having trouble with the screenshots before. Um, so I, you talk about where we should be at right now, and I am not there, and I'm panicking. <laughs> but that's, yeah. Okay, Carolyn. Well, sorry to hear that you're panicking, but thank you for letting us know uh, where you are with your project thus far. And Dominique, you can go next, and on deck after uh, Dominique will be Alina. All right, good evening, everyone. I'll show you my screen. Um, I actually, um, can anybody see my screen or no? Uh, all I see is a blank screen. Oh, here we go. Um, I pretty much ruined my sub pages. So I was able to work on my main home page. So I got that done. I'm trying to place a header on it. Um, yeah, I still have like my pretty much my topics, um, flowers, the crystals. Um, I plan on adding LED lights to it because I've been doing some therapy with myself when it comes to my own anxiety and depression. I seem to be having positive um, effects with the LED therapy I've been doing. So I'm probably gonna add that to it. But um, I, what I'm trying to do right now is I have to add a footer on here. Like I said, I ruined my other pages. As you see, I got to put some more padding, move this down, um, add some more stuff down here. I have to add my... Um, I'm sorry, my, I can't see anything except a black screen with your name on it. Yeah, Dominique, I, I don't think you're showing your screen, Dominique. I don't mean to add to your stress, but I can't really see what you're doing and I am interested. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, hold on. Let me see. I don't know why it's not showing. You hit the green share screen. There you go. Now we can see. There it is. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. I've been it's okay. stressing <laughs> out like to the max. Um, okay, back to the beginning. Uh huh. Can't even get back to it. I don't even think this is it. Um what I'm trying to do now is with JavaScript and well with JavaScript, if I can, because I've been having a hard time, is I want to add a positive affirmation on here. So it's going to like daily give you like a random positive affirmation. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Boring, but yeah, that's me. Um, I wouldn't say it's boring um, when you talk about affirmations. That is one of the components in my app. And it's a very helpful thing for me, too. So. I'm looking forward to using your app. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, for the feedback. And thank you, Dominique, for the demonstration. Next on deck, we have Alina. And then after Alina, we'll have Fabilia. Um, so I really don't have anything to share because I broke my code by adding functions in JavaScript. And I'm just kind of confused on that still. I don't know. I struggle with JavaScript a lot. So I'm just trying to fix my code so it's actually functioning again. Um, so it's not working, so I don't really have anything to share. Okay, thank you, Alina, for your update. Next on deck, we have Fabilia, and after Fabilia, we'll have Jahil. Okay, hello, everybody. I'm in the same situation with many of my um, fellow classmates of stress, um, feeling overwhelmed. I was working on the navigation bar with Dana, and we had it working <laughs> and then I don't know what I did but I broke something and now it's not working although I do have another navigation board so I'll just show you what I have here <laughs> See if I can get to share um uh oh I can't see share 
Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That the um, this is the, I guess you would say the cell phone view, and I have a button here that doesn't seem to be working right now. Okay, there it is. I have this button, which is no longer a hamburger. I'm not sure if I'm liking this. Um, I have the sub menu, which was here. Okay, that's that. Well, there it is. So that's different. And then when I open it up like this, whoops, sorry about that. It opens up like this. So right now I'm working on the spacing between the image and the upper part of the bar and trying to get the text in here to show more, be more outstanding when you click on it. And then of course, getting everything linked up. And then I'm working on changing the font here. I have a font here that I really like, or I found one that I really like, but when I put it into the document, it came out like this. It was supposed to be a script font, so I don't know why it looks like that, but that's not the one that I picked out. So that's where I'm at with this creation here. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Fabilia, for your updates. On the navigation on the top, when you're talking about having um, more them stand out more, do you mean like on a mouse over, have it be animated? Yes. The letters would pop up. Yeah, that was it's supposed to, JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed yeah. to show a color or do yep. something other than just sit there sit because there. you can yep. see I it, but you. it's hard to see it when it's mm -hmm. yep. when you're hovering. I know exactly over what it. you're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's a pain. And then mine has an additional problem because I have a drop down menu to it that doesn't want to drop down in the right place. And I've just yeah. <laughs> These things are alive. I'm telling you, they're out to get us. These web pages. They are. <laughs> it looks great. Yes, they are. <laughs> thank you. So, Fabilia, thank you so much for your updates. Next on deck, we have Jaheel, and then after him will be Karen Baxter. And is Jaheel in the room? I don't see Jaheel on yet. Why don't we try to circle back to him, Dana, at the end? No problem. Uh, next is Karen Baxter, and then after her will be Kyle Gilbert. Hi, everybody. Okay, so basically what I've been working on, uh, I want to share my screen here. Okay, so is everybody able to see my screen? I am. Every, how about everybody else? I see your desktop. I don't see it. Okay, you see my desktop. Okay, so this is the JavaScript that I've been working on to be able to get my cards to print out. So I was able to get that and get that to run. Now, I had also been working with the JavaScript and the, the next part of it, the next part that allows it to, allows the user to interact with it. And what it is actually supposed to do is they would go and they would enter their date of birth and uh, kind of focus on what it is that, you know, they're wanting. And the program asks them three separate times um, to pick a card. Okay. so then what the program would do is to show them what card that they picked, okay? And after that, then that card, the card that they picked would take them and give them an interpretation of that card. So I had the JavaScript working and in my excitement, I don't know, I should have took a, a <laughs> screenshot then when I got it. But I didn't take a screenshot. When I went back to take the screenshot, it wouldn't work. So now i that's where I am figuring out how to get that to work again. And also what I wanted to do was use, uh, use cards for the bottom part with my testimonials and things, because I think it'll make it look a lot neater. So that's where I am and where, what I'll be working on 
in the coming weeks, I'm sure, along with catching up with homework. And everyone who's feeling overwhelmed, uh, I just want to say Michael Jackson said, you are not alone. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for your updates and the encouraging words. Next on deck, we have Kyle Gilbert. And then after Kyle is LaTanya. Hi. Um, so I, I made a few uh, changes on the index page of my website, added a few images and stuff like that, uh, but not a lot, but um, mostly I've been investigating map APIs um, for navigating people from site to site as they're taking the tour with my um, app. And I kind of surprised myself how much I'm able to understand since the last time I looked at it before modules four and five. Um, I've been making notes on like what I need to learn, what I don't understand about the example code and stuff like that. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at Google Maps, um, their directions API and their geocoding API and a little bit API, I mean, and their um, text to speech stuff uh, a little bit. Um, they have extensive, extensive documentation and examples, which is really cool. And it was kind of cool as a user of it to kind of see behind the scenes a little bit of how it's working. Um, but eventually I noticed that there was nothing showing examples about turn by turn navigation. Um, there was like no text. It was all just images of where you would drive, like you would put at the bottom of your, you know, if you wanted somebody to find your business or something like that. Um, so I did some searches about how to do this with Google Maps and turned up an exchange on Stack Overflow where somebody pointed out that the actual terms of service for Google forbid you from doing anything that mimics the services that they provide, like navigation. So I don't know if I'm incorrect about this, but I'm thinking I probably can't use Google's API. Um, I found another API called Mapbox that I think I'm going to use instead um, that definitely has turn by turn navigation and um, looks like it has voice uh, navigation as well, or at least the capability of like feeding you text that's specially formatted to be um, uh, fed to a service like Google's text to speech or like maybe Siri or whatever assistant somebody has on their phone. I'm not exactly sure how that works yet, but um, so that's kind of what I've been doing, um, reading lots of stuff on that and taking notes. <laughs> I can share my screen um, and show I did add some images to my um, index page that I was showing um, last week. Um, so um, I added like a map of Syracuse and a few images of like historical um, uh, images of um, Syracuse over time. Um, and that this section does still disappear when you um, make the window smaller. Um, for like the mobile view, which is more like this. Um, I also fixed some problems with my um, uh, buttons where they had like some outlines around them I didn't like, which is, um, you know, kind of a, a minor thing. But um, I don't know, in case anybody hasn't seen it, I guess I'll go to my um, tour page as well. This is what my site currently looks like. I haven't really changed anything about it since last week. So, but. Okay, um, Kyle, I do want to let you know that you're at time. Okay, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And next we have uh, Latanya, and after Latanya is Malaquan. Hello, everybody. I um, since our last update, I'm still working on my portfolio piece where you can buy original um, creatives through the site. And what I did was I built out the whole bottom um, with the HTML and working with the JavaScript. And so right now, um, I had hoped to have it done for today, but I'm working on the reveal that I had mentioned last time. So I actually have the structure in place in the JavaScript. It's just getting it on all of the elements. Um, and so basically, that's where I'm at. Thank you, Latanya, for your update. And next we have uh, Mel. And after Mel is Sarah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen? I've, I had problems with the screen share last time. Can you yeah, see my screen? We just see your desktop. Yep. So you can't see the VS Code? No. Try it again. Yeah, try to do your whole screen and then try to click into your VS Code. You see it? No, I, I don't see your VS Code. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same problem last time. Um, what you can do is if you want to screenshot it and put it into Slack, and then folks can go over there while you're talking. Okay, yeah. Can you circle back to me then? Sure. I'd be happy to. Okay. 
All right, uh, next we have on the list. Hold on, let me uh, stop that. All right, so next on the list we have Sarah and after Sarah is Sha. All right, hey everyone. Uh, let me just share my screen. All right, so since last time, I just reworked my footer over here. Um, and this is the information that was on the contact page. I think I showed you all last time, but I figured I didn't need a whole separate page for that. So I put it down here. And then the other thing I did was added more validation to my forms here. So they can't be blank. Um, it, submits an error if they're blank and it tests if it's a valid email address or um, if it's a valid password and then it still tests if the passwords match but that's all I have so far but that's all. Sarah thank you so much for your update and next on the list we have Shaw and after Shaw is Shantina. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. So since uh, last update, uh, I work uh, index HTML. I work on images, made the images, uh, the first one full width and responsive. Uh, also work on spacing, text, and fonts. Uh, next would be working, uh, kind of finalizing the uh, nav bar uh, and also adding some JavaScript uh, to do some navigation with uh, header and or navigation bar and uh, footer. And that's all. Shah, thank you so much for your updates. Next is Shantina and after Shantina is Susan. And hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, hello. Good evening. Uh, I'm just trying to get this done. So since the uh, last time, um, I've actually started doing a little bit of uh, research to see if there were, uh, just to see what was out there that was like um, our product and what we were putting out there. And oddly enough, I found a, another website. I'm not sure if they're established as an actual company or not, but they have the exact name that we chose with the exact purpose that we're working towards. Um, just like going in an aisle, the bread aisle, I know there's a hundred different types of bread. So, you know, and they all sell for some reason. So I, I do understand that we can definitely still go uh, move forward, but it was just interesting um, that they create. And it was actually right, it was only in the, like the last month or so that they uh, started this thing. So that was interesting. Um, we're still going to move forward. Uh, we'll probably just add some other things on. Um, that was just a little background of that. I don't think I've ever shared anything um, with everyone. So this is kind of going way back, but just so that I can um, share uh, what our vision was um, for our website for the girls and I. Um, so they wanted to have a page that would have, um, you know, give them the opportunity to tell everyone about themselves and their background, uh, where they can sell merchandise, and then maybe a, a feature of, you know, the week, um, either something that they're selling or someone's story um, to share that's empowering for uh, young ladies like themselves. Um, we wanted to have a visual, so that's why we did have the large pictures right in the center um that shows positive things as well as the merchandise um that will be the the focus of um uh, our web of the web page is you know what they're selling and what their message is and i do like the idea of a sliding banner um uh, being in the middle um and then of course at the bottom someplace where they can contact us or um sign up uh, to receive uh, updates and things um after that we um have uh, some, uh, some basic things on here. Um, it's hard to see. Uh, however, we do have the, um, the logos, they're up here. 
the logos to uh, go into their social media pages um, as well, because that is targeting the audience as well as uh, that's uh, what my girls are about, um, as well as some uh, additional links and things that uh, should be, I should be able to have live and we'll be able to update the next time that we all get together. So that's it. All right, perfect timing, Shantina. And the next person on the list is Susan. And after Susan, uh, Mel, we will circle back to you. Hello, um, I, I can share my screen. I don't really have a lot of updates like most people. I was not able to do anything a couple weeks ago and this past week was just a lot. Um, where's my share? Here it is. I just did minor stuff. I, I did a sidebar. Um, let me see where it is. Uh, I was experimenting with little things like this little mouse over here where it changes color. I don't know. I was just doing little side things that aren't as important as getting info on the page. But um, I have a sidebar here that I don't really like. Um, it forced everything down. I've moved it around like three times and I can't figure out how to fix it. So I may just do a standard uh, across the top nav bar. Um, I did do a little alert just to have something in here. Like when you click on the North country, I get my alert that says, uh, you know, there's no music. It was just like a way to add something. Um, just learning with Ryan, I thought with APIs, I, sounded like it would be something I would use once we learn how to do our own to maybe to do the favorites page, which I haven't figured out how I want that to look at all. But knowing that that's like maybe what that would be used for is helpful. Um, like that I would be creating a database for people to store their favorite uh, festivals in. So I think that's it. I still have to resize images and like just make like one page set up to be correct and then just copy it over. So I'm still a little behind like some people. Um, but that's because I have all these other things where I've started watching a JavaScript and reading about Flexbox and CSS and all that. So I'm doing like too many things at once, but that's where I'm at. Thank you so much for your updates. And I was looking to see if there was anyone else that I needed to circle back on. I was looking to see if Jahil might've joined us since uh, the last time I called out his name. Has anyone noticed if Jahil has been able to join us? Uh, Dana, I'm not seeing Jaheel or Ariel, so why don't we okay. hand it over to Mel to give his update. All right, then. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, one moment, reset the timer. Yep, and thank you for reminding me that we had Mel on standby to do his. Mel, go ahead. Okay, so I, I shared the pictures in Slack because I can't share my screen. But um, I ended up going back to my original idea which was the, the better gift depot. Um, the last two weeks I've been um, really focused on, you know, getting everything, you know, to a responsive layout. So I've got, I've got all those components all set. Uh, so I've got three pep web pages uh, built. They're all, they're all responsive. I've added um, some, some hover effects, you know, with the mouse. I've also um, created, a, created a logo with Canva. Um, I have a section, I have a section. Can you guys see the pictures in Slack? So, yeah, so I've got one section that's gonna be for the blogs. I have another section um, that's gonna be uh, uh, for the cards. I've also got a page, a page laid out. I've also got the blog page laid out with the same, same kind of layout. And I've also got another page for the wish list as well. And I'm everything- I'm interrupt you, but we're not seeing um, anything in Slack. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the CIC Students 2 page. I was just in there, okay. Thank you, sorry to interrupt you. Yep. Now, one quick thing, I just, I'm just curious, just try real quick. Um, if you hit your share screen, you can share individual windows. Okay. Maybe you want to try to give that a shot real quick instead of sharing your whole desktop. How do I do that, Jesse? So if you click on the green square sheen, uh, share screen, sorry, um, 
when you click on that, I send you a screenshot, you should see something similar to that screenshot I just sent you. So if you have like VS Code or like Chrome open or something, I think it might be out of time, but I, I just want to try to see if we can get this resolved moving forward. Green button is it's not responsive. Oh, okay. Oh. Let's try to figure this out then offline, Mel, if it's cool with you, and we'll just see if we can get you all set up moving forward. Um, but Karen did just send along the screenshots uh, that you sent, Mel. Okay. You want me to start over or? Uh, so you got uh, no, I, I think you're good. Yeah, we, we have the screenshot access now, so I think we should be all right. Yeah. Mel, do you mind if I screen share my screen with your stuff open on here? Is that all right? No, that's fine. I can come back there. That's a great idea, Jason. All right. Uh, sorry. Take it. Can you can you just unshare your screen, Mel, and then I'll. All right. Sorry about that. Um, All right, and I'll go ahead and uh, reset okay. the timer. Sure. Uh, just want to make sure I got it. Yeah. So this this right. here is uh, the home page. Um, I've got you know. Um, the header component with a, you know, the search, the logo, and the login registration at the top. I've got all the, the navbar components. Below that is where the, you know the blog post will be, and you know below that is you know the section uh, to sort through all the sort through all the products. Uh, below that is you know what my products are gonna are gonna look like. Um, I've been focused a lot on getting everything you know responsive because you know the first time I. Uh, uh, did my web page, you know, things were just laid out on the page. And then when I changed the viewpoint, it was just it's all messed up. Now this screen here is uh that screen there is what the the wish list the wish list is gonna look like. So it's just be a username, username, profile picture, and I've got uh sections uh for the users to you know create a wish list or add wish list to the items and I've also got one other page for you know the blog posts. Which is uh yeah so that page is the bottom of the blog post same concept it's going to be able to sort sort through information and these are the cards right below it and then the other picture is just that's the top of the blog post and yeah that this picture there that you got and that's just showing you know the responsive layout for everything and yeah, that, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm just kind of uh, focused on, um, fig I know I'm gonna use the Amazon uh, product advertising API to get a lot of content on the page, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna, um, what the best way to go about that is. So I'm just kind of working through that right now. Okay, perfect timing. And I believe that concludes. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me get this computer to be quiet. Okay. Wonderful work, everyone. That concludes our demo day. And just a reminder to make sure that you provide your uh, feedback on the, the peer review form. And we'll take a few minutes uh, for anyone who has any questions or comments about any of the demos that were presented today. going once. I just want to say awesome work, everyone. We're, we're at the halfway point and uh, it's really cool. To see all your projects coming together. So I know I said it last demo day too, but keep celebrating those wins. I know it's uh, very easy to feel overwhelmed. Uh, that's normal. It's like if you're feeling that way, that is okay. Uh, just kind of drill that home as well. Um, and yeah, just getting those quick wins, you know, hey, I'm going to try to build this tiny component on my site. Today, I'm just going to try to get the nav bar done. Today, I'm just going to try to maybe do the links in the footer, right? Uh, those quick wins and just kind of setting those like little goals, kind of how like Laura is doing with the micro goals and the micro actions for career coaching, kind of apply the same thing for your code, honestly, um, because it, it can be really challenging when you're like, I've got this huge project to tackle. The more you can kind of break it down into little bite-sized pieces, the better. So I just want to kind of share that for some thoughts. Um, but awesome, awesome work, everyone. You should be truly proud of where you're at on the halfway point. And um, you're going to keep learning how to, you know, do cool new things. So, um, but yeah, I'll hand it over. Anyone else that has additional thoughts or questions or feedback? 
I just wanted to say, Jesse, that was great advice and a great strategy to use um, in order to not feel overwhelmed, um, just to commit a certain amount of time to one particular task and then to try to get it done. And if you're unable to move past that, um, definitely reach out for help. So yeah, great advice. All right, I, I think that's it. Um, wonderful uh, projects and updates, everyone. And now without uh, any further ado, and if there are no objections, we'll hand the class over to Joey for React. Well, at least there's no objections. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Joey. You're all set to start. All right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Your projects look pretty cool so far. That's awesome. Um, I guess I'll just uh, jump into kind of introducing who I am and um, what I can bring to the table here. So my name is Joey Butzik. I am a senior front-end software engineer. I'm currently working for a company out of San Francisco, so I'm working remotely. Um, I just started that job literally two weeks ago. Um, wasn't actually expecting to do it, but it was a nice surprise. And um, it's um, going to be a lot of fun there. But prior to that, um, I worked for Raymore and Flanagan, and I was a senior front end developer over there as well. So a lot of the last two years was spent recreating the public facing website for Raymore and Flanagan from the ground up. So I handled a lot of the front end code and there was a whole team of engineers that handled um, all the different aspects to it. So if you were go to their website, about a third of everything you're looking at, um, I was uh, responsible for. Um, so that gives you an idea of the type of work that I was doing. Um, before that, I was working on a lot of internal code. So a lot of internet applications, a lot of web applications, but only served to the employees of the company. So no one from outside the company could actually see these applications. So it was kind of hard to show them off and uh, show people what I was doing because only the employees were allowed to see them. Um, but if you go over to their main public website, um, you'll be able to see some of my work. And so um, given that, uh, I did create a little application that we're going to be developing and it's going to be based on an e-commerce site so if you're building an e-commerce project, or even if you're not, there's a lot of principles in there that you can take advantage of. Um, given the work that I was doing for the past two years, it's probably no surprise that it's a, an e-commerce type of project. Um, but what's cool about that is that um, I have a lot of insights into how those types of things work. And so I built some of those uh, patterns and structures inside this application so you can get a flavor of what it's actually like to create this type of application out in the real world, and it might surprise you. You may you may think, "Wow, this is this is what it what these some of these sites look like behind the scenes." And yes, so um, it's really not that difficult. There is a lot of aspects to creating a site. It's not just you know the front end code. It's not just the back end code. There's a lot of different things, as I'm sure you're all discovering. Um, but I'm going to show you some React tips and tricks that can get you going and at least get some um, you know the front end portion of your project started. So. Uh, so let's dive into, uh, before that, actually before that, um, is anyone have any specific questions regarding React? Maybe you have some ideas of what you think it is or some pre um, preconceived notions of what this portion of the teaching is going to be about. So I'll just, you know, give everyone a chance to ask any questions um, going in um, if they have any. I have a question. Yeah. This is Latonia. Um, when I was reading the stuff you sent, it talked about it being declarative and it kept saying like, think about it, how you want it to be, I guess, in the end state. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Can you just talk about like what that would look like um, as you're trying to code it out? Sure, actually, that's great. Cause I wasn't sure if um, I was going to mention that right away or not. I was actually gonna get into declarative versus imperative type of programming at some point. But since you asked the question, we'll start with that. Uh, so when you're working with React, it's considered declarative, which means you tell it what you want it to do, and it will display it for you. Versus if you're working imperatively, you're telling it step by step everything 
that needs to get done in order for it to show up on the screen. So for example, if you were just opening up a JavaScript file and you link it to your HTML document and you wanted to add some elements to the DOM, you would literally create them like document.createElement, you create it. I think you guys went over this uh, last week a little bit as well with Ryan um, or maybe it was Max, um, just kind of like a little review there. So if you create the, um, the elements that you want to show up on the screen, you have to give them their styles, you have to give them any functionality, you have to tell them exactly where to go in the DOM, exactly how to update. If you wanna change them, you have to manually do all that stuff. That's like imperative program. You're going step-by-step, step, procedure by procedure. So with React, you tell it what type of thing you want to show up. You give it some styles and some functionality, but React handles creating it in the DOM for you. It handles updating it for you. Um, if you need to swap out a component, you tell it when and it'll do it for you. You don't have to manually go through line by line and tell it how to show up on the screen. React knows how to do that. That's why React was created to alleviate that step for developers. So you only have to focus on what you, what the elements on the screen, what you want them to look like and how you want them to behave. React's gonna figure out the rest for you. Does that kind of paint a little picture? All right, it alleviates a lot of the step-by-step. -step. So it, it takes a, a big chunk of that work off your hands. Um, anything else? I just threw a comment in the um, chat. Oh, well, I guess right. I look at comments too. I was just reading it so that I could to let you know what it was. This is a P and your name instead of a no. It's just my fingers. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I know you don't spell a J-P-E-Y unless you want to change it. I don't. <laughs> so let's see. In some ways, React seems a bit easier than all the extra steps and logic involved in JavaScript. Like, let's see. Yeah, so easier is a relative term here. It's easier from the standpoint that it's easier for the developer to get something on the screen, not from the standpoint that it's easier programming wise. Like there's still a learning curve to it. There's still things you have to know. Um, to get better at React is, in order to do that, you just need to get better at JavaScript most of the time. So the more you get familiar with JavaScript, the better you're gonna be at React. And you'll see uh, as we go through things, um, what I mean by that. Um, React is a library. Let me actually go right over to the, um, oh, I gotta share my screen. Do the share. Let's go one. Make sure I share the right screen. Okay, so hopefully you see the React homepage. Yeah, I can see it. Everyone see a job? Right. So blue React. Okay, so React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So it's literally just a library and you use it in such a way that you get elements to show up on the screen. And I, I know there's gonna be a question on, well, what's the difference between a library and say a framework? Because that question comes up a lot. I had that question um, in the beginning as well. And so this is the easiest way I could describe it. A library is a collection of code that can be imported into your project and utilized. There's no rules, just whatever constraints there are on the library. So if you have a function that adds two numbers, you can't make that function do anything else, right? But you're free to import that project or import that library and use the functions however you want to accomplish your goals. Um, a framework could be a collection of libraries that are used with predefined conventions, so basically rules. And those rules are in place so that you can create the project the same way every time. So you may have five different libraries, but the framework dictates that you create, you use those libraries in a very specific way in order to achieve your end result. So that's the difference. So a library is just something you import, but a framework is like a collection of things that you use in a very specific way, right? And then also tech stack could come up too and kind of be lumped into this sometimes. And the tech stack's just, it's a collection of technologies used together to create a project, but there's no rules outside of whatever rules are in the framework that you might be using. So you could have Node on the back end, you could have React on the front end, you could have MySQL database. That's a tech stack, 
you're free to use those three together however you want. There's no rules in place. Um, so that's not really a framework. That's just a collection of things that you're using to create your project. Whereas a framework would be something, so React's just the library portion of it, but there are frameworks that use React in order to accomplish the front end goals. So there's a framework called Next.js and that, is, um, that uses React heavily, but it uses very specific conventions uh, on how you use React in order to create the project. So there's rules in place that you have to follow to get it to work. Does that make sense? Difference between library and framework and tech stack. Okay, so I don't know if, if any of these were confusing before then, or if you have any questions on this before we get into it a little bit more, uh, let me know now. Uh, but hopefully if there was confusion, hopefully this did kind of alleviate some of that. So there's two questions in the chat, Joey. Latonia oh. would like to know if you can recommend a good React book. And then Carolyn asked, is React at all related to JavaScript? React is only JavaScript. So it's absolutely related to JavaScript. Um, it may look like it's not, but it is. That's all it is. Um, when it compiles down, it's just a bunch of JavaScript functions. Um, as far as a, a book, I haven't really read any React books, so to speak, um, in quite a while. Um, but I would say that one of the best resources for React is literally this resource right here, reactjs.org. It's if you if you look at the docs and the tutorial, you it, you can follow it along like a book, and it does a great job of explaining what React is. So whoever created the docs for these. Um, for everything in React, did a really great job. It's really approachable. There's not a lot of jargon. I mean, there's jargon in anywhere you go, but I mean, it's React specific jargon, of course. Um, but they explain it in such a way that if, if you don't get it the first time, probably a second or third time going through that, that snippet of text, will pr you'll probably get it. So um, I would highly recommend the official documentation first. I can look for other resources as well. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, simply because I haven't picked up any React quote unquote books in quite a long time. Um, and I think any of them I did, they were just bookmarks from online books. So, but I can look at, I can look at that for you. Um, okay. So then there, there's a couple more questions. Sorry. Um, Elena would like you to know if you can, um, show that tech stack definition oh. again, she was copying it. Or yep. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. If I jump around, <laughs> just say, Hey, Joey, go back to that. That's fine. Yep. And then Carolyn wants to know, so React is a drier version approach in JavaScript, Deb. A drier version? Yes, you could think of it that way, sure. Now you can use React in a non-dry way, which where you're, you're copying yourself all over the place, uh, but that kind of defeats the purpose as well. Um, also this particular um, resource here, this is literally, if you go into cl um, Google Classroom, under the module six portion, this is uh, the resources module six, this documents right in Google Classroom. So um, if you need it, it's, it's there as well. So we'll update this over the course of the next three weeks with different resources, uh, maybe some different terminology. I'll put it all in here and then you'll have, um, I'm sorry, someone's probably still copying things, um, but you'll have, it, you'll have it there as well. So you don't have to worry about copying too much. Um, so as long as Google Classroom doesn't, if it doesn't get deleted out of there, you'll have it. It shouldn't, but. Yeah, um, well, I'm just saying, just saying. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so React. Um, so basically what I wanna do since you've been doing a lot of JavaScript is I wanna show you something very simple on how to create a React application. And it's gonna kind of explain um, it's gonna explain a lot. You may not think it explains a lot, but by the end of the three weeks, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I get that. Um, but we're just, I'm gonna demonstrate how to create a very quick React um, front end. And I'm going to just start, oh, I think I already have, yeah, we can turn it like that. Just so everyone can see my VS Code window. So what I'm gonna do Joey, is- do you want us to code along with you in VS Code? Oh yeah, if you want to, you can, absolutely. Um, I'll try not to go too fast. Um, I'll make sure that at the end, I um, 
I paste this. I think you guys have a channel for pasting code into. Student pasted code C2, is that it? It looks like it. So I can paste that in there. Um, there's other code that's already in the um, Heck Upstate repository that we'll be using. So this isn't the only way we'll be doing this. In fact, there's a very specific um, thing I wanna show you guys um, on how we're going to use the repository for working with the, uh, for creating this application that uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make. Uh, actually, before I go into this, um, I just wanna give a quick high level overview of how I planned on going through the next three weeks, um, just so we have an idea. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully there's enough time to go over everything, but even if there isn't, uh, we, are, we will be able to cover a lot of stuff that you're gonna be able to utilize. Um, so today I wanted to just talk about uh, what React is, which we kind of already started. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about elements. Elements are a big deal in, in React and uh, they're the basic building blocks of everything we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna show you how to render those. And then we're gonna go over some environments for working with React. So what I'm about to show you now is not typically how you'd want to create a React application. Um, it's just the most simplest way to do it. Um, there's a lot of other tools and environments out there that are far better for creating um, React applications. So we're, we'll go through those. Um, so I'll show you how to set that up. And um, before I go any further, did everyone have a chance to look at the, or get a chance to look at the quote unquote homework from over the weekend for React with the code sandbox stuff? I know someone did um, post a comment specifically, uh, <clears throat> but we'll go over that as well. Okay, cool. So people are saying, yes, that's awesome. Um, if you missed it, don't worry, uh, we'll go over that today. So basically today's like a, an introduction to React, um, very basic level. We'll talk about the application we're going to create. We'll talk about the environments we're going to be working in. And uh, we'll talk about how we're going to work on exercises and do homeworks and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna pack, I'm not gonna pack it too much. Um, I just wanna give you an overall flavor of what this is gonna be like. And then hopefully um, before too long, we'll be jumping into the application. But I do, over the course of this week, I do wanna make sure that we hit the basics for React. So what it takes to get something on the screen, what it takes to have multiple elements interacting with each other on the screen and all the different, um, Kind of patterns that we're going to see the type of structures we're going to be working with all right so to start let's just create something on the screen using react kind of like a hello world for react i'm just going to create a new file you can open a code editor anywhere you want if you have a folder of your choosing where you place all your example code um you can use it there i just created a directory on my hard drive called practice and so I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it index.html. And we'll create a new HTML document. Oh, my things aren't working. There we go. I, I take it you guys are familiar with doing this already. And we'll say, uh, hello world react. Can you make your text a little bigger? Yes. Thanks. Me, if I make it too big, I can't. Navigate yeah. either. So, how is this? Is this okay? Looks good. Yeah, that's uh, good. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So, to get React to show, first of all, let me just save this and I'm going to put a div in here. I'm just going to say hello world. We'll, we'll say hello non React just so we can see the difference going forward. And then if I launch this, well, I can't do it like that. I'll have to go open it from Finder. Let me see. Code. Let's see. Got too many, too many folders on here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to open up. Let's move this out of the way. We have our hello non-react. 
Uh, we don't need that open. Okay. So in order to get started with React, React, like I said, is a library and you import that library or make a reference to it um, so that you can utilize the functionality within it. And so for specifically for React, let's bring this back for a second. How do we get started? Well, there's a couple of different things we could do. We can either use one of these three things here just to try it out. Um, we can download this HTML file and edit it, <clears throat> but that already kind of gives away what I want to talk about. Um, React to an HTML. Is it, I think this is the CDN. This is not the CDN, is it? This is, oh, maybe it is. Yes, okay. So uh, you guys are already familiar with importing script tags into your projects, right? The reference thing, referencing them. So same thing here. We're going to just take these links here, these script tags, and we're gonna plop them right in the head. So now we have them the same way you, you know, make a reference to Bootstrap or anything else. And so now that we have those, um, we have React in our in our page here, and the way React works is uh, well. Let, let me just start a script tag here. A script tag. Excuse me, Joey. Can you pop yep. those into Slack or the chat? The links that you put in, so yes. we can copy and paste them in. Thank you. Slack. You'll have to excuse me. I'm trying to get used to this workflow. <laughs> yeah, you put them in the head instead of the body. I'm just doing that because I want them to load first before anything else. Okay, because um, I was doing this tutorial on this page. And oh, okay. Had you doing it in the body when I when you said read this stuff? I mean, I really went in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, we can well, make it look yeah. like their example as long as the React scripts come before yours. That's yeah. the important part. So I'll do what you're doing. Oh no, wait a minute, they are in the body. Or you just moved I just them. moved them. <laughs> You're trying to confuse me. Um, and which which ones did you take from the, I know you put them in Slack, but the ones Oh, I'm gonna the put page. them in I'll put them in the pasted code. Yeah. They're probably the same ones that I probably. If you got them from the React site, then they should be the same thing. Yeah. I'll just grab them from Slack and try to kind of find where I found them again. All right, thank you. Um yeah, the other reason. I was trying to avoid too much stuff being on the, the screen, but that's okay. All right, so the way React works is we have to create elements, this kind of the same way that you create a DOM element. So when you create a DOM element, you'd say like const, let's say div equals uh, document dot create element, right? And you create a div. So similar to that approach, uh, React takes a similar approach and we're gonna say, um, we'll say const app equals react.create element. And we tell it what type of element. Um, so same way, we're gonna say a div. Now create element actually takes three arguments. Oh, all my other stuff's crashing. Oh, hold on. Oh, why aren't you closing? There we go. <clears throat> so create element takes three different things. Let's let's move this off the screen. Um, it takes the element that you want to create. So in this case, I want to create a div. It also takes an object that represents the attributes that you want to give that div. So let's say you wanted that div to have a class, you could give it that. Or if you wanted to have um, a click handler, or maybe um, uh, an ARIA tag or something like that. This is where you would do that. And then the third is all the different things that you want inside of that div. So this is what's called the children. So this div would be the parent and anything in this third argument is gonna be the children of that div. So I could put anything in here. I could say, hello world react, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we have to tell React, we want to render this thing to the screen. And the way we do that, let me make sure I have, okay, I do have. So this first script tag is how we're creating create element. This is where this functionality comes from. It comes from this one right here. 
The second one, which is React-DOM, that has all the functionality that makes, uh, that React knows how to place things into the DOM. So all the stuff that tells you how to render it, that exists in this library right here. So React is actually a couple of different libraries. Um, it's not just a single one. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to say react dom dot render, and this takes a couple of different things. The first thing it takes is our application, the thing we want to render. The second thing it takes is a reference to some element on the screen in the dom already that we can place this React application into, because without that, React's not going to know where to put it. You can say, oh, great, you wanted to create an application. Uh, where do you want me to render this thing? So up here in this div, we're going to give it an ID. We'll give it an ID of app. Okay. In this second argument, we're going to make a reference to that div so that React knows where to put it. So we'll say document dot get element by ID app. Does everyone see that? So the first thing we're doing is we're creating an element. The second thing we're doing is we're gonna render that element to the screen and we're gonna do it inside of this particular element that's already in the DOM, which is this div right here. Sorry to interrupt Joey. Um, yep. But because you're trying to accommodate the larger type and everything, but it is cutting off the ends of your line. So um, not seeing all of the code from a certain point on. There we Great. go. That's perfect. Thank you. you. Could, yeah, you could put any text you want in here. It could say, you know, elephant shoes. It could, it's just fine. <laughs> any, anything you want to show up inside of this div is what you put in here. All right, so I'm going to save that. Head back over to here. I'm going to refresh. And now I see Hello World React. So if I look at my dev tools and I look inside elements, I'm going to look at the page. Let me close this console. What we could see here we have a div. We have a div inside of there that says Hello World React. That is what React did for us. We didn't tell it to say, um, you know, document dot append child, this div thing. React knows where to put it because we told it where to do it. It took care of the rest of it for us. Okay, so right down here, here's our element. We created a div. Now I could change this to something else. I could change it to a p tag. Come back here and refresh. And you'll see now it's a p tag. If I wanted to add attributes to this thing, I would do it in here. And this is an object. Um, so it takes uh, key value pairs. So if I wanted something like, um, oh, I don't know, a data dash ID attribute, I could say my app ID. Come back over here and refresh. And there's the attribute right there. All right. So the first thing is the element. The second thing is all the attributes you wanna give that element. And the third thing is all of the children that are going to be in assigned inside of that element. Everyone with me so far? All right, and it's not, it's not too dissimilar from just creating elements, you know, just straight up document dot create element. Um, you may think, well, what's, what's so great about this? <clears throat> what's great about it is that we can reuse this all over the place, kind of how you could do it before, uh, but we have more flexibility in how we assign things to it, different functionality that we can give to it. Um, now, spoiler alert, this is not how we're going to create React applications because this could get really, really unwieldy, especially if you have a giant um, tree of, of DOM nodes, right? So just as an example, you don't have to copy this because it would just be far too um, too awful to do that, but I'll, I'll do it for you. So we're gonna have div. Well, what if I want another div inside of here? What do I do then, right? So I have to react.create element. Div, 
active. Give it some stuff. Uh, let's say another child. So now I have this element and the child of that element is another element, right? Now let's say, well, actually I want, I want this nested even further. Let's go react that create element. And I want an H1 tag. And we'll call it a title. Okay. Now when I refresh, we should see a div, right? So there's our main div. Here's our second div, and there's our H1. You can probably imagine that writing applications like this is not going to be fun, <laughs> right? And then how do, you, um, how do you visualize that, right? So when you're working with HTML, everything's very visual, right? So here's the head. Everything inside the head's right here. Um, but React is just a bunch of functions, right? It's just, I just got to call these functions, and it returns these, um, these different elements for me attributes and children and things like that. Um, this is not how you typically will create React applications. In the very, very, very beginning, sure, um, when they were testing it out to see if this framework would work, that's what they did. Uh, but they quickly realized that this is not, this is not going to be uh, sustainable. It's not going to be scalable. It's just not easy to understand. Um, so aside from this, um, you can also use what's called JSX, if anyone did any reading on the uh, React um, site. JSX stands for JavaScript and XML. And it's like a syntax extension on JavaScript. Now we can't write JSX right here by itself. The browser is not going to know what that is. Um, you need different pack or different libraries to compile it down to what we see here in order to make that work. Okay. Uh, but at the very bare bones of what React does, even with this JSX syntax that we're going to get into, at the end of the day, after we, it gets compiled down to whatever functions are going to ha happen, this is what it's going to spit out at the end of the day, because that's what the browser understands. It doesn't understand all this special syntax we're going to get into. Um, it only understands these functions. So when you look at uh, React code that's been compiled down, um, you're going to see a bunch of this stuff all over the place. Um, now, it won't look exactly like this. It's actually going to have far more stuff embedded inside it so that the browser has a, more of an understanding of what's really going on. Um, but this, this just looks complicated and confusing, and we don't want to do that. But at the end of the day, this is just how it works. So you create elements, and you tell React to render them by using ReactDOM.render. Now, under the hood, uh, React uses something called a virtual DOM. And what that is, it's basically like a giant object, a glorified object that has a reference to all these different elements and all the different things you want to do in your React application. And the reason React is so fast, and actually let me step back just a second. Creating stuff like this, creating DOM nodes, updating DOM nodes, um, that's very expensive computationally. It takes a lot of... Um, a lot of computing power for the browser. Now, you may think, well, browsers are so fast. Um, relatively speaking, it's, it's expensive computationally. It requires a lot of effort on the computer's part in order to render this, or on the browser's part in order to render this stuff. And so what React does in order to mitigate that is they have what's called a virtual DOM, which is this kind of object that exists outside of the DOM. And React takes a look at this object and it says, OK, um, the user clicked on something. And it looks like I need to update this P tag right here on the screen. So I'm just going to go through my virtual DOM and do all the updates. Oh, I see the user clicked on this other thing. And they clicked on this thing. And they're visiting another portion of the site. All these things kind of take up bandwidth, right? And so I'm, I'm very simplifying this. But in order to make the point, all these different actions that need to happen in the DOM, while the user may see a lag, they see a lot of spinners. They may be waiting a long time for all these things to update. Um, so React, what it does is because it's faster to work inside of JavaScript than it is to do all the stuff in the DOM, React updates this giant like object thing, this giant virtual DOM object behind the scenes. And then when, it's, when it sees an opportunity to render something on the screen, it says, oh, cool, I have an opportunity. I'm going to update everything in the DOM at once rather than all these tiny little things over and over and over and over making the user's experience slow and, and sluggish. 
So it reacts very fast uh, because it handles all of the changes before it renders anything to the DOM. Does that, does that make sense? Or does it sound plausible? <laughs> no right, semicolons, so, huh? Um, it, I, yeah, it depends on the environment. I'm, I, depending on my environment, I either use them or don't use them. Um, oh, at, work, so they, at work, I use them. Some, at my personal projects, I don't. They do um, exist in React then. I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah. Technically. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I'm not commenting on your coding, trust me. <laughs> um, so if you guys are used to semicolons, I can make an effort to make sure no, I'm no, putting no, semicolons that, in there. I just, I didn't well, know. I wanted to make sure that I don't confuse anyone um, with my coding oh. styles. I'm already dazed and confused. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So, All right, thank um, you. so now we have React elements. We have a way to render them via this virtual DOM thing, and React does all the uh, all the gritty work for us. That's great. Hey, Joey. But, yes. Um, Mel had a question. He wanted to know if, like, where you have like React DOM, if React is always capitalized. So, like, where you have React okay. create element. Where we have it right here, yes, absolutely. Um, React, when we import this library, the import, the, the global, like the way I'm doing it now, I'm doing it as a global variable. This is what the library expects me to use. Um, and in most, in, actually in every case, you use, an, you use uh, React with a capital R. And there's also very specific capitalization rules that you have to follow when we're creating elements as well. And I'll get into that. Uh, but yeah, capitalization does matter very, very, very much. Okay, good question. All right, so do I, are there any more questions? I have to make sure I'm looking at the, excuse me, at the um, the chat. No, that was okay. the last question that I saw. Yeah, so definitely point out questions because I'm not used to looking at, yep. at chats. <laughs> and that's, that's, pro that's pretty much what I'm gonna do anyway. Um, oh, uh, another quick question while I plug my laptop in before the battery dies, because that would be tragic. Um, when do you guys usually take uh, your breaks? Is there a specific um, time or whenever you guys feel it's it a good time? Kind of varies on, you know, like how you're feeling, where you're kind of going with the flow. It just, it totally depends on where you are in your lecture, um, where you okay. think it's a good break point for them. I would say usually by 7.15 at the very latest, they get some type type of break, but you can All right, do let's, before that or after. Yeah, let's aim for that. Let's aim for that. Uh, just, sorry, I just want to get logistics out of the way. Sure, already, yep. Probably should have already asked that, but. That's okay. Okay, so let's, everything we saw here, we're just going to get rid of this or I'll just, uh, I can just save this and put it into in case anyone wants the reference to it. There it be inside the pasted code chat. So we're gonna do React a different way and quite frankly, a more fun way. Um, at least I think it's more fun. I hope you do too. So, all right. So React has this, let's see, where, where, should, I, where should I be right here? So we talked about what React is, elements, how to render them. Okay, let's talk about environments for working in React uh, before we get into JSX, because JSX requires these environments in order for us to code with it. Um, so I don't want to dive into that before we have an environment working that actually can use it. All right. So as you just saw, um, we can absolutely just make a reference to some script tags and use React that way. Um, but when we get into things like JSX and other types of libraries, we want to be able to compile that stuff down into something the browser can understand. And typically when you create a React application, you're using something um, called a bundler. And a code bundler, um, you'll hear the, the product called Webpack used a lot because that's the primary tool that most uh, people work in React. That's the primary tool they use. Um, but there's a bunch of other bundlers that are out there. Um, people have homegrown their own and things like that. Uh, but we're going to be using Webpack, but we're not going to be, quote unquote, setting it up. We're going to have another tool do that for us. And the reason for that is that if I were to introduce Webpack and teach you how to use Webpack, um, it would be like four weeks later 
right? When we're done with it and ready to use it and we're gonna understand it. There's a lot that can go into these applications. And so there's tools out there that let us bootstrap our applications without us doing all that, that, that dirty work, so to speak, like all the gritty mundane stuff that you have to do with every application. Because you don't wanna set that stuff up from scratch every single time. That's why these tools exist. And the primary tool, there's two primary tools we're going to use. Uh, one tool uses the other under the hood. And the first tool is create React app. So if we go to, if we're on the React.js org website, and we go to docs, we go to create a new React app. It's actually talking about what I just talked about. Right here, if you're running a React or creating a new single page app, use create React app. And that is going to bootstrap an entire um, like boilerplate of an application for us. And to use it, we literally have to do just this, right? All of the different configurations are already handled for us. Um, a lot, some people aren't a fan of some of the configurations. So um, they take it and they, they do what's called an ejection where they get all of the underlying code underneath and they make their own configurations and stuff like that. Um, we're not gonna go into that. We're gonna use all the defaults because it's a lot simpler and quite frankly, it's really, really uh, set up very nicely. So um, the team behind Create React App did a great job of listening to everyone's concerns and took all of the kind of like the middle of the road pieces and put them all into one tool that anyone can use as a starting point. Um, so a big kudos to the React team and everyone that um, updates all these uh, tools. So they're, they're very, very good. Um, and they've gotten a lot better over the years. Um, if, I, if we were teaching this about five years ago, it'd be kind of like iffy in certain sections, but a lot of those bugs and things have been worked out for the most part. So uh, it's in a pretty good state. All right, so to use it, let's go back to, well, actually let's start a terminal. Um, or have you guys been using the terminal inside VS Code at all? You, you have? Okay. So let's do that. I'm going to start up a new instance of VS Code. And where am I? Am I still in my practice project? Probably not. Let's open that up. Let's move this. Oh, I can't do that. So I want to code. Let's see. To practice, we're gonna open this folder. So running Zoom and doing all this stuff is really kind of taxing my system here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys found that out, um, but Zoom really does kind of kind of a memory hog sometimes. I all right, it so is a lot. I've yeah, noticed, it's, I've noticed lately, and I'm I'll try to do things, and I'm like, what the heck. Yeah, especially with, at work, there's a lot of systems that we use that are uh, very, uh, very memory, they're memory hogs. And so every time in a, I'm in a Zoom chat, I have to close out half of them. Um, all right, so oh, before we get into that, let's open up. Actually, we don't need to do that. We're just going to do, we're going to open our terminal. And what directory am I? So that's right, I'm in practice. So does anyone know what PWD is? So print working directory. They better know uh, it. Okay, good. <laughs> to hammer it in, hammer it in. All right, so to order, in order to use, create a new React application, we're gonna do this. We're gonna paste it in. Um, has anyone gone over NPX versus NPM yet? I don't think so. Okay, That's a so acronym. think of, okay, so when you use NPM, you have to download Node or whatever package and download NPM as a package manager, and then you can use it locally. NPX is kind of like using N someone else's NPM. You don't have to have it installed locally. And so what this does is it makes a reference out to um, like an NPM that's out there and it runs for you. And then it deletes itself afterwards, kind of like. So you can think about it that way. I'm oversimplifying that. Um, but basically it's like running NPM on someone else's computer and then you don't have to worry about installing it or upgrading it or anything like that. So we're gonna take npx space create react app space and then the name of the app. So we'll just go with the default, my app, hit enter. Um, this may take some time. 
um, because there's a lot of stuff that it does install. Um, but while, it, while it's doing that, um, are there any questions so far of anything that I've gone over that maybe I need to clarify? Hi, it is Latonia again. Can you just kind of clarify again how this works? We we don't run React through Visual Code. We do it through Sandbox or Code Pen. Just can just logistically, can you talk about how that that works again? Yeah. So React runs when the browser um, <clears throat> executes the React script. So the same way that you import a script tag, like with your your own personal JavaScript file, you import it into the browser when the browser runs or when the browser loads the page, <clears throat> excuse me, it'll come across that script tag and it'll execute it. So if inside your script tag, you have like console log, hello world, that console log will get executed and you'll see hello world in your, in your console, right? So when we make it, well, when we make a reference to our React application script tag, the browser will run it and execute that code. So in our case, it was, hey, I see you have a React um, library. I'm going to import that. I'm going to run it. I see you have React-DOM reference, so I'm going to run that. And I see you have the script tag with an element, create element. Okay, so I'm going to run that. And then I see you have React-DOM, so I'm going to run that. So it just goes in order, top down, and it runs all these different scripts. So in VS Code, all we're doing is telling the browser where to look once our page loads. Right, so we add the script tags to our HTML document um, and, and so forth. Does that make sense? Okay. I think, let's see. So um, Kyle had a question. Her says that she needs to install the following packages, create React app, okay to proceed, yes. Yes, okay to proceed is yes. We just wanted to make sure. Yeah, um, especially if it's the first time running that. I was still getting set up in the directory, so most of those steps went by. Are they in Slack or in the chat? So they're actually right in the React documentation. So if you go to reactjs.org, here I go. All then right. to docs and then create a new React app. Oh, to docs. And about, that's, okay, that's the extra. Yep. And then about halfway down the page, you'll see three little lines of code. Create a new React app. Simple, learn more. Yep, so under Keep the going. Create React app. Create a new React app. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't actually have the links obvious, but it's got simple HTML page with script tags and learn how, is that the one we want? Uh, here, let me, let me paste the actual link right to I'll put this in, where should I put this? Oh, I'm under create a new React app. It's like instructions how to, okay, you're down further. Yep, just got to scroll down. Same words, missing a few. Oh, I see. Yep. So you scroll down, you should see this black block of code. This is under docs. Mel, did you fix your question that you had for this, oh. what you pasted in the student code? Oh, getting started, docs. All right, so I pasted a link right to that page and that section of the page. So that's in uh, CIC Student Resources okay, Slack. Thank you. Yep. Just don't know why I'm not seeing it. I think it's because I had to. Yes, we are ignoring the moderate severity vulnerabilities message. We're not going to get into why. <laughs> that's a rabbit hole. Uh, but for the purpose of this class, we can ignore that for now. Uh, let's see. Okay, does everyone see, or does or do mostly everyone see happy hacking? All right, see thumbs up, excellent. Uh, so from here, we can, then uh, what this does when you run create react app, is it creates a new folder for your application. In this case, it would have created a folder called my-app. So if I clear that out and I type um, ls, I should see my index file that I was working on and I see this folder here. So I'm gonna cd into my-app. And if I do an ls in here, I see a bunch of other stuff. 
So that's the basics of our application before we actually run it for the first time. And if I actually go into here, actually we could see it visually right here. So we created, it created a package.json. There's a bunch of stuff in here. It's got a readme file, which is if you go to the, the GitHub repository for a create react app, this is the same thing, excuse me, that you'll see there. And it's got some other stuff. It's got a source uh, folder. You can see there's some JavaScript files in here and some styles and things like that. This is the boilerplate of a, an application that's basically ready to run. Like we don't have to do anything else to set up an application at this point. This is literally it. Um, in order to run it, what we do is when we're inside, when we're inside that folder, we're going to type npm space start. And that's going to launch our application. So what it's going to do first off is it's going to <clears throat> run any scripts to compile things up, to convert any JSX into usable JavaScript that the browser can utilize. And then additionally, what it'll do is it'll start up a server for us. It'll launch a browser. Like it, it literally just did it as I was saying that. And then it's, it's going to connect to that server through localhost and it's gonna serve up our application for us. And then once this thing finishes loading, uh, it's, it's starting the development server. You won't see anything until it's done, um, but we're gonna watch our, our, uh, our console here and then we'll know when it completes. But it's doing all that stuff up, uh, all that stuff in the background. The other thing that it's doing for us is it's setting up an environment where when we make changes in our code, it's going to refresh the browser for us. And we'll be able to see those changes in real time as they update, which is really helpful when you're creating uh, visuals, right? You don't want to have to like go somewhere else, do some stuff, compile it, refresh the browser, do all those things. This development server does it all for us. And so now we here we have this animated logo and um, a reference to uh, their official documentation. But this isn't literally a React application. Um, and then if I can, I can go into here, I can go right to app.js. And if I look at this code, right? So here's, oh, of course it's gonna do that to me. Okay. <laughs> if I look at this code here, let me just zoom out just a second. Mel had a question about the yarn.lock file. He said he's missing that file in his application. Um. I think that's okay. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. Um, that's yarn lock is for, uh, so when you, when you create a package JSON file, you have references to, let me zoom in, I zoomed out a little too far. Um, you have references to all these different libraries and their semantic versions, right? So React in this library is 17.0.2, um, Web Vitals is 1.0.1. If I, if let's say I upload this um, application to a repository and say other developers want to help me work on this application, I want to make sure that they're using the exact same versions of all of my libraries. Because if I use, let's say I upload this and I'm using React 7, version 17, and someone else wants to use this and they're using React version 14, that's not going to work. They're not going to be compatible. So what the lock file does is it says, hey, when you pull this repository down, when you clone it and you run npm install, you're going to download every single one of these packages and that specific version. So when they make a code change and they do a pull request and I see that pull request come in, I can be confident knowing that they use the exact same version of the software that I'm using. And I don't have to worry about any version mismatching or any, um, you know, um, any conflicts in the code that's being written other than maybe their styles or something like that. So if there's any version conflicts um, and I import those and I, can, I, um, I commit them to my repository, the next time I run my application, it might fail miserably. And I don't want that. So what package or uh, what lock does is it locks those versions to only that version that's in the package.json file. So that the next time someone works on this code and uploads it, they're the same thing. And I only need to worry about the code that's been changed and not the underlying libraries that are being used. Does that answer the question? Okay, cool. 
so if you don't see it, don't worry. Um, you may just need to run npm install or just run npm start again, and it'll probably just create it for you, to be honest. Um, or it may create um, a package lock.json. Uh, but either way, uh, we're not going to be uploading this um, a little example application to any repository, so we don't really need to worry about it at this moment in time. Um, but that's basically what those lock files are for. Question, Joey. Yeah. Um, I had to change the directory. I had actually created a file instead of a folder, so my app wasn't going to work. Um, it's still doing its thing. I have to wait till it's done to do the yep. next part, right? Yes. Yeah, you'll have okay. to wait until um, you actually have your folder with stuff in it. Okay. So if you don't see that yet, you Whoa. won't be able to touch it. And you should see uh, happy hacking in your console once it's ready for you to yeah. do Yeah. Oh my gosh, it worked. Okay, so now I can start. Yes. Of course. No. CD my app. I don't need to do that. Yes, you do. I so do you want to CD space my dash app. Yep. I'm just you copying. Wanna, yep. Yep. Go into there and then you'll type npm space start. And that's going to launch your application. Or I just go ahead and copy it right from Slack. That too. Saves carpal tunnel. Okay. So, um, all right. So what I wanted to do next was let's take a look at this code. And inside app.js, which is inside the SRC file, the source file or source folder, I mean, uh, we want to go into app.js. So everyone go there. And then if we look at this, we see this looks like HTML, right? Looks exactly like HTML. This is JSX. So JSX allows us to write something that looks like HTML inside of our JavaScript. Uh, but don't let it fool you. This literally is JavaScript. It's an extension on the JavaScript library, um, this JSX um, package, right? And so what it allows us, what JSX does is it creates these tags for us. Um, that's where that X and XML comes from. So if anyone has ever heard of XML, it's basically a bunch of opening and closing tags um, that allows us to define data inside and kind of data structures. Whereas HTML allows us to define like what shows up on the screen, XML show, tells us what to define as a data. JSX tells React, hey, this is what I want you to show on the screen. And inside of that is the data I want you to put inside of those things. So JSX is kind of like a combination of HTML and XML and JavaScript all in one. So it takes care of a lot of the underneath stuff for us, uh, which is really great because you don't want to have to write all that stuff from scratch. Trust me, um, I tried before. It's not a fun endeavor, and I'm glad that a lot of other smarter people have figured all those nuances out for me. So, so now that I've got that first part done and it's happy, what was the next thing you had us enter in the terminal? Um, so, do you have your application? Is it launched? Did you write npm start? Oh yeah, I've got my little atom flying around on the. Okay, so page. you're going to go into VS Code. Okay. You're going to go into the My App folder. And inside there, you're going to go into the SRC folder, source folder. This is, a, and then we'll get into the folder structures in a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay. And inside there, you want to double click app.js and open it up in your cons or in your uh, editor here. So here we have a div, we have a header, we have an image, we have a p tag. So if we go over to our web page and we will take a look at the elements. Any guesses on what we're going to see? Where'd it go? There it is. Let me close oh, yeah. my console. Oops. This down a little bit. So here we see, we see this thing. You need you need to enable JavaScript to run this app. So if someone comes across this application and JavaScript is not enabled in their browser, all they're going to see is this. They're they're done. They can't do anything else. Um, see this div ID equals root. Before we actually go into anything else, let's go back to, now the root of almost every application starts at the index file. So index.html, in JavaScript, it would be index.js. So if I go into index.js, I see react-dom.render, document.getElementById root. So just like we did the get element by ID app, and this one, they're just saying root. So what it's doing is it's going to look for the, look in the DOM for anything with an ID of root 
<clears throat> and it's going to render my application inside there. So if I come back here, I see a div as an ID of root. So that's where it's going to put my application once it's compiled. And here we see we have a div class of app. So I go back into app.js. I have a div class name of app. Header, right, header. I see an image, a p tag, an anchor tag, image, p tag, anchor. So what, jo well, what JSX and React are doing for us is it's creating HTML for us after we run the application. So it's going to handle all that stuff for us. We're not writing HTML. We're not writing um, CSS right here. Or yeah, so we're, let me step back. We're not writing HTML and we're not telling that HTML to render to the DOM. All we're doing is we're defining what we want React to do for us. You say, hey, React, I want you to create a div. I want you to create a header, put an image P and an A tag in there and I'm good. That's, but I want you to do that for me. I'm just telling you how it, how it should look, right? I want you, this stuff to go in there and React goes and does it for us. So anytime I make an update to this, let's say, say, you know what? I don't like that image. I'm gonna put my own logo in there later. So I'm gonna take that line out. I'm gonna save it. And our development server is gonna go, oh, there's a change. Cool. I'm gonna re-render this thing. And I'm gonna refresh your browser for you. So I don't have to go and manually refresh the browser. So we were looking at it in the web dev JavaScript console from the React page. And then we were also looking at it within our um, Visual Studio. <clears throat> yeah, so, so on the, in the browser, we're so, looking at the elements pane of right, our dev tools. We were seeing the same thing in two different environments. Was that kind of what you were trying to get at? Yes. Okay, yep. I got so it. <laughs> what we, yeah, what we see over here is mirrored exactly over here. Yeah, that's what I just make sure I was on track of what you were, okay, thank In you. fact, using Chrome's dev tools, as I'm hovering over each of these elements, yes. you could see yep. how it's, right? Yep, and so I was just that's doing that over here too. Yep. And thank I can you. actually take all of this out. Do that, come back here. And everything will be wiped out and I'll only see what I put, right? So this environment, this create react environment is what we're gonna be using to create the application um, that we're gonna be creating over the course of the next three weeks, right? Now for homeworks and stuff like that, we're gonna be using a different environment, but that environment will use create react app underneath the hood. It's actually doing the same thing, but it's one step removed and it simplifies it even more. And that's code sandbox. And we'll get into that um, in a little bit, but we're coming up on a quarter past the hour. So I think we'll be taking our break. How long do you guys typically take breaks for? They get anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes usually. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start up again at 7.30. Um, that'll give um, all of us a chance to get refreshed. And then we'll come back then and we'll go and we'll talk about code sandbox next because I want to stay on the topic of environments. Um, but before we go on break, are there any specific questions about Create React App or is anyone ha um, hung up on getting anything set up? The only other question that was in the chat was, um, Kyle said she thinks that XML is similar to JSON in terms of what it does. Yes, it is. So XML defines a data structure. JSON defines a data structure. They're both doing the same thing. They're just using a different technology. But that's exactly right. So that's a, that was a good intuition. Uh, intuition. Yep. HTML is similar, right? It's still a data structure, but it's a data structure that describes what the browser should display. Whereas XML just describes data that should be utilized by an application. JSON just describes the data that should be utilized by an application. Okay, cool. So we'll go on a break. Uh, we'll see everyone back at 7.30. And then we'll talk just a couple more things on code or on Create React App, and then we'll get into Code Sandbox and talk about how we're going to handle homeworks and stuff like that. And I'll also fire up the uh, completed application um, that we'll be working towards uh, for the end of this uh, particular module. Hopefully we'll get to all of it, but we'll see how it goes. Even if we only get through 75% of it, 
it's still far enough to actually help you guys create your, um, your React applications. Okay. All right, so we'll see y'all back at 7.30.
Start to one another. A few more seconds here. My right, computer wants me to restart. Nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. <clears throat> Remind me tomorrow. Seeing a lot of duplicate like Zoom windows for people. Is that something that you guys have noticed? Karen, have you noticed that at all? So they well, do I'm, it. I'm using two computers. Yeah, they when they so what they okay. do is they use two computers so that they can share from one screen, but also they work off of like another one. So it's okay. I was just wasn't sure if uh there was an issue with my Zoom and then I had to- No, you're good. Version. And rather than have you stare at two live me's, I shut off one of them. Yeah, um, that's, that's usually the, what happens is, you know, gotcha. there's like three yeah. students that do that and it's just, it makes it easier to- Yeah, I have a bigger monitor to actually watch this stuff. Code and- That works, especially if your monitor is small. Yes, <sighs> it is. Yeah, I just bought a new monitor like two weeks ago. I've been putting it off for too long. All right. All right. Uh, are we all back? Or are we still waiting on the people? They're probably back. Um, okay. You only get like a handful that turn their screens on, which, so it makes it tough in order to. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to, I don't leave anyone in the dust. <clears throat> all right. So we left off with updating our hello world. Let me get back to sharing my screen. Definitely desktop one. Let me know when you guys see the hello world up on the screen. Cool, all right, so. All right, so we can change this. Um, our development server will refresh everything for us, and that's fantastic. There's a couple other things I want to go over with Create React App and the folder structure for it. So if I go into my um, my folder viewer here, I can see that there's a couple different things, a couple different levels of, of folders. So the primary one is the My App folder, whatever project name you gave the Create React App uh, tool. You'll also see node modules. Have you, you guys talked about node modules yet? What that is? Okay, cool. Uh, so, so that's there. You'll notice it's also grayed out. And there's a reason for that. And that's because we're ignoring it in this git ignore file. Um, did you guys touch on git ignore at all? A little yeah, bit. They, okay. they should have done it a little bit in order. Okay. To... Well, just to reiterate, in case anyone uh, missed that, Git ignore is a file that tells um, Git what not to put up into your into your rep your uh, public repository or any repository, right? So Node modules is massive. I mean, I'm just I'm still scrolling, and there's there's yeah there's a lot of stuff, right? So create React app and React not React but create React app. Um, installs a lot of packages. Um, and those packages have dependencies on other packages that have dependencies on other packages that you know, yada, 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 right? And so all these show up in node modules. I don't wanna check that into my repository. That's huge. That's gonna take up a lot of space. So in my git ignore, I say, okay, I don't want you to upload to my repository anything that's in here. I don't want node modules in there because honestly, when you're pulling down someone else's repository, you don't wanna wait you know, 24 hours for it to be pulled down. <laughs> you just want to get it down and then start working with it. So typically what you'll do is you'll ignore this one because the first step you should tell anyone to do once they pull your repository down is to run NPM install or yarn install or whatever it happens to be. I think it's just yarn. I don't think it's yarn install. Um, so we're, we'll be working with NPM um, just to keep things simple. So if I type NPM install, NPM is going to go and create node modules for me. 
So I don't have to worry about downloading it from anywhere. I don't have to worry about uploading it to my repository. So that's what Git ignore is for. We're just going to ignore these things when we're, you know, creating, uh, doing pushes up to our repository and, and all that good stuff. Public. Well, before I get to public, I'll just go back into source. Source is where we're going to put all of our JavaScript. It's going to be all of our components, all of our elements, all the logic that we have that's going to make our app what it is. Um, and this is a typical convention. Typically, you'll see a source folder. And inside there, you'll have another folder structure for components and for data stores and all kinds of different things. Uh, but typically, this is your entry point into the main application. And in the source folder, you typically have your index.js file, and that's the file that starts off your entire thing. That's where react-dom.render lives. So, and then from here, we can, as you can see, we're importing from all, all the other places. Now, also at this level, we have, I guess, our git ignore, we have our package JSON, which is also important to note that anytime you need to run npm start, you have to make sure that you are at the my app level. If you're not, npm start's not going to do anything. It's not going to know what to do because you can only run npm start and have it be successful if you're running it from the same folder as your package JSON file. Okay. There's some other things here. We talked about the lock files. There's also a readme file. Um, so if we look at this, let me just open this in. Oops, I want a side-by-side -side view. All right, so this is just a, a, a Markdown viewer. So what I did was I just copied all of the stuff in this Markdown file, this readme file, pasted it in here so I can look at it, have it look pretty. Um, but typically you'll see a readme file at the same level or at the root level of your, um, your whole folder structure. And this tells you a little bit about what the application is how to get it started. So this one's saying, hey, run yarn start. Um, that's the thing, same thing as npm install. There's yarn test, yarn build. Uh, we're not gonna do any ejection in this one um, simply because there's so much that goes into it after the fact that we just wanna use the defaults. If anyone has any questions on um, the create React app ejection scripts, uh, we could talk about it um, at the end or something like that. Or if you wanna just, you know, send me a message in Slack or something later on. Uh, but I don't want to confuse anyone because there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. Um, I just want to keep things simple for now. I don't want to get off track. And there's some other stuff in this readme file that tells me more about what I can do with this application, um, how I can work with it, what I need to do to contribute to the repository or, and all of that good stuff. Uh, oh, I don't want to do that. I just want to go, yes, I want to leave, go back to here. All right, so typically you have a readme file, and those readme files are important. Um, so if you're creating a repository and you want others to work with you on it, make sure you do include a readme file. Um, so if they go and they say, hey, I want to help you with your project, say, hey, great, here's the repository, have at it. Well, they're not going to know what to do unless you spell out some instructions on how to actually get started with your application. Um, and that's kind of like a foreshadowing to something else that's going to come later on for our homework. Um, <clears throat> wink, wink. Um, so there's also this public folder. And inside the public folder is basically everything that's accessible from the browser. So the browser does not have access to your source folder. It does not ac have access to other things inside of there if you don't want it to. Um, typically, you, don't, you only want to make public what you want the public to be allowed to see. Um, so when you're, when you're publishing or you're deploying your application, you don't want to just give, you know, give away all of your code. You only want to give them the stuff that's going to be rendered in the browser. And that's, where we, that's what the public folder is typically for. Um, inside here, you'll see an index.html file. Should look familiar, right? So we see div id equals root, right? So the index.html file that we worked with before when we were just writing the functions uh, of React, uh, we came at the ID of root, uh, the ID of app. In this case, the index.html file has the ID of root. And so all this stuff exists in here. Now, if you wanted to use, let's say, Bootstrap for your styling, you could come into the index.html file and paste in those Bootstrap uh, link tags right in here. 
Um, and then down in the body, you can paste the script tag to the bootstrap files right in here. Um, and then the next time your application renders on the screen, it'll have access to all that stuff. Um, there's other ways to import Bootstrap. You can use a specific library with some already created React components using Bootstrap. Um, we're not going to really get into that. Um, we're just going to use um, some script tags and things like that, um, simply because I don't want to import all these too many various things. And um, I just don't want it to get confusing. I want to keep it as streamlined as possible. Uh, but if you want Bootstrap or some other CSS framework, you can just paste a link tag to it right in here. So that's where all this stuff lives. There's also some, some icons. We saw the, the rotating icon, and there's some other things in here, some PNGs. But yeah, your public folder is where you have everything that's public facing, right? And now you may think, well, how do I get the React application script tag in here? Well, the simple fact is you don't. React, create React app does it for you. So that development server that we were talking about, um, what that's going to do is it's going to inject a script tag for you in this page so that you don't have to do it. And if we come over to, to our, uh, actually, no, not here. If we right click and inspect this page, not inspect, sorry. View page source. Let's take a look. So we have the script tag. We have this, oh, what's this? I didn't write this. So this is what the development server is doing for us. It's saying, hey, here's this bundle.js file. There's this vendor's main chunk file. There's this main chunk file. The chunk files are basically anything that's not React. So all the extra libraries it may be importing, it's going to place JavaScript in those files. But our main application is this bundle.js file. So underneath the hood, React, Create React App is using Webpack as a bundler. And what it does, it takes all your JavaScript, smashes it together, and it puts it in this bundle file. That's why they call it a bundler. It's just a bundle of JavaScript that is run the next time that the browser um, comes across the script tag. So that's essentially how that works. So when you're creating your own application, let's say you're doing a more advanced type of Webpack setup, you would tell Webpack where to place the script tag and you tell it to place it into your, your HTML file. This Create React app is doing it all for us. But I just wanted to show you that there's, there's no magic to this. It's literally just some tool taking all your JavaScript and putting it into a file and putting a script tag in your file for you. That's all it's doing, okay? So that's that. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wanna cover with Create React app. I don't think so. Um, we're gonna get into this a little bit more later with um, our application. Um, in fact, this would be a good time to talk about, we'll talk about Code Sandbox in a little bit. Uh, for now, I think what I'll do is I'll show you the completed application that we'll be working towards. We'll start there. So I'm just going to close this out. Oh, and by the way, uh, to stop your development server, you go into the terminal, you hit control C and that stops it. I have a quick question, Joey. Yep. Do you ever use the app.test.js file? This? Yeah. No. Okay. Now, that's not to say I never use tests, right? But for create React app, I don't use this particular one. I'm just curious because um, my boss had, in Angular, they have the same type of file. It's a test file. Mm -hmm. And he's always like, just delete it. We'll never use it. Well, this is also only testing this specific application. If I ran this, guess what? It's not going to work. Okay. Like it's going to, the test is going to fail. Why? Because it's looking for something called learn React. Eh, that doesn't exist anymore, right? So this test is essentially useless to me. Um, it's just an example to show you how to write a test. Okay. Uh, it's just the um, kind of like the pattern of how you could use the uh, the testing framework that's built into Trick or that Create React app uses, which I believe is Jest. Um, if I go to package JSON, I could probably take a look and uh, Jest DOM. So they are using Jest for their testing framework. Um, 
so that's why that's there. But yeah, I don't, I don't use it. I write my own tests. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, oh, and just to reiterate, go into your terminal, hit Control C, and that will stop your development server. So now, if we go back to here and try to refresh the page, site like can't be reached because well, I just shut the server down. All right. So if you ever need to, um, I would highly advise that you shut down the server manually before closing VS Code and opening up another instance of VS Code because that server could be running in the background. And then what would happen is you'd go to launch a new one and you're going to get an error and it's going to say, I'm sorry, I can't create a development server. And you would be like, what? All I, I typed NPM start. And that's because it's trying to use the same port number as the last one. So if that port number is busy, you can't use it. So just as um, always get in the habit of closing that server down before you close VS Code, just in case it doesn't do it for you. So I've had that happen to me before. And um, yeah, I spent a half hour wondering why the heck things weren't working when in fact, all I had to do was just kill that process, all right? But because I opened up a new instance of VS Code, I didn't have a reference to that process anymore. So I had to restart my computer. Um, so fair warning in case you come across it. Uh, let's see. So, all right, cool. So I'm going to close down this VS Code. And I'm going to start a new one. And sorry, I do everything from the command line. Uh, where am I at? Am I in my home? Okay, so C code. Let me see. Uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to start up code from here. And you don't have to follow along with this one. This is just a demonstration of the application. But inside, uh, everyone knows how to pull down the latest uh, repo, right? Cool. So you're going to definitely want to do that. Make sure you have the latest. Inside the cohort two folder under module six, you'll see a bunch of stuff. Now, markdown and mocks, you don't need to worry about. That's there because I had, I gave some references to uh, Ryan and Max about the application so that we could kind of collaborate on it and make sure we're all in sync. So you don't have to worry about those. Um, in fact, those are now out, out of date. So definitely don't worry about them. What we care about are these three folders right here. Class project complete, class project start, and class project working. Now the class project working is what we're going to be using in class throughout the next three weeks. We're gonna work out of that folder. And the way I'm gonna do this is just to make sure no one's like left behind. Um, at the end of every day that we're working inside there, I'm gonna commit those changes to the repository. So the next day, all you have to do is pull down the latest and everybody's gonna be at the same spot so we can all follow along. Now, if you wanted to, kind of code along um, or try it for yourself from the start, that's what start is for. That's our starting point, okay? So that's gonna basically have, um, it's bare bones. It's just the basic application from when we start teaching it uh, before anything, any code gets updated in it. So if you wanted to start from scratch or make it your own or copy the code out of there, uh, that's what that's for. And of course, the completed project is, you probably guessed it, that's the completed project that we'll be working towards. So what I'm going to do, oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna go into class project complete. And I'm gonna take a look at, actually, I'm just going to open an integrated terminal. Verify, yes, I am definitely at that folder level. And I already installed, I did all, I already did NPM install. Uh, just so you don't have to sit there and watch it churn away. So I'm just going to type npm start. That's going to launch the application. And this will take just 10 or 20 seconds. Hopefully not more. But essentially, I'm doing the exact same thing that we just did in our quick example. So it launches a brand new web browser uh, tab for me or just reuses my current one because it was at the same port number. And we're just gonna wait for that to get set up. It's gonna do all the things behind the scenes. It's gonna create um, the, what's called hot module reload. That's the portion of the server logic that says, hey, every time you make a change, every time you save a file, I'm gonna refresh your browser for you. So anytime you hear hot module reload or hot module reloading or hot module replacement, that's what that, that's what that is. It's listening for changes refreshing the changes um, in your browser for you. So not much to look at right off the bat. 
Um, the home page is literally just so we can test an API connection. So now because you haven't created APIs for your in Node just yet, like we haven't gone through Node and Express or any, or, or any other frameworks that Max might be talking about to create the APIs for your projects. Um, I basically created a mock API, which is going to simulate the data that you would typically, typically get back from the server or from the database, right? So we're gonna be working towards, we're gonna be working with endpoints and we're gonna be pulling data from those endpoints. So everything that you just went over with Ryan is gonna be very relevant in this module as well. And so that'll be good for both practice purposes and for practicality, because that's typically how you'd want to get your data anyway. So also, um, so if I click, click the test API connection, I see this bunch of green text, that's fantastic. That means my API is working. If I look inside my console right here, if it'll open up, why aren't you opening? There we go. I look inside the console. I can see this confirmation here. I'm using a mock API. That means I'm not getting real data from outside sources. I'm getting pretend data from inside this application. That's all that means. Uh, but we'll be using that pretend data to build out this application. So if I close this, I go back up. I do see, I called this application r, &R. Um, Let me just go to the actual GitHub repository. GitHub, oh, I want the hack state one. Cohort two, module six. Now, if I did it my work properly and I've put a readme file in there, as soon as I click this, I should see my readme. And it's pretty printed for me. So r, &R is the name of this application I created. Um, it's an example web app built with React that simulates an e-commerce experience uh, where users can add vacation packages to their cart. Now, uh, we're not going to be going through some checkout process. We're only going to get to the cart portion um, simply because we just wouldn't have time. But all of the, um, all the stuff we're going to go over in creating this, you could use for the rest of the application if you wanted to finish it. So you should have enough knowledge at the end of this to actually create a workable uh, front, uh, front end user interface for your applications. So, and it tells me, hey, once you pull it down, npm install and npm start, right? So there's my readme. Um, again, foreshadowing for some stuff for homework. Um, let's go back to the app. So here I have at the top some links. I have a cart, search. I've got wiki, shop, and home. Home is just this page here. Shop is <clears throat> our kind of like storefront. So we see pictures of different vacation packages. Um, we can click on one. You can see there's some text out here. There's a bunch of you know garbage in here, just so it's, it fills out the screen. There's some images of this particular people that were on this particular vacation. They took pictures. Uh, we can add this package to the cart. Maybe we want two. Maybe we want to you know um, maybe you're taking someone with you. Add that to the cart. We get a little toast. Those are called toasts that pop up. So just to confirm that we actually did make a change, we can head over to our cart. Here's our, here's our cart. And then I can see this package here. There's two of them. It totaled it up and it gave me a subtotal. Now the checkout process, again, doesn't really work because we don't, we don't need it to work. We just need to get up to that point. Um, but everything you see here, I'm hoping that we can get through. Um, and if we get through all of this, you'll definitely have enough knowledge to create applications um, that are using e-commerce type of patterns. Now it may not look like a lot, um, but underneath the hood, we will be doing quite a bit. And also since we'll be working with endpoints, I created a wiki that we can um, access when we're developing this thing. And there's two different types of endpoints. There's the product endpoint, which gives us all the data regarding the different vacation packages. These are the products that we're selling. And also the cart endpoint, of course, is for accessing the cart data. So if I click on this link, I'll see all the different endpoints that I have access to. Um, and these, these wikis here, these, um, this is markdown files. All this markdown is typically what you would see in a project. So in fact, this markdown right here, um, if, mm, yeah, all this markdown here is basically the same type of shape of all the data that I've been accessing and using to build um, the Raymore and Flanagan site the same type of thing. 
It's not exact, of course, because I'm not going to use their exact patterns. But this type of thing, you're going to see in a lot of different projects. You're going to see, okay, here's all my data about my endpoint. This is the endpoint right here. I make get requests against it. This is the thing I need to give to the get request to get my data. So that's what the input models are. That's the thing I input into the endpoint. My view model <clears throat> is what I get back from the endpoint. Now that may look confusing because it's data, uh, but this is view model is actually a construct of the MVC architecture, which is a view, uh, model view controller, which is, you're gonna get it, you're gonna hear about that. Um, Max might speak on it a little bit as well. <clears throat> Um, so that's a pattern for the back end, basically. Well, it's all kind of full stack, but mostly the back end. Uh, that's how you get your data to the front end. Um, so the view model is what the API gives you back. That's really what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so all this stuff I get back from the product view model. You can see there's quite a stuff, quite a bit of stuff in here. There's a product get view model, right? So that's also related to everything here. Um, API product search, also a get endpoint. So I give it this thing. And let's see, product search, get view model. I get back this thing. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> the cart endpoint, similar thing. There's an API cart. That's a get. There's a get input model. That's what I give the cart. So it gives me all the data back. This just tells it whether or not I want uh, test data or quote unquote real data. Here's the cart data that it gives me back. And there's also something here, cart add, which is a put. So what that does is it takes this stuff, the input model, and it shoves it into the cart that's in our database. So the next time we get a get against the cart endpoint, we get the stuff that we just put in it, all right? And all this stuff is here for you to reference as you're working along. And as we go along, we'll be utilizing this as well. So you can get, um, so not only did just for the, over the past couple of weeks, you saw how to access endpoints and what to do with it. Now you'll get to see documentation around using somebody's el somebody else's endpoint and using it to build your application, right? So um, think of it as you were just hired onto a company. This is their application. <clears throat> they said, okay, uh, we need a front end developer and we need to build out some of the front end for our e-commerce site. Here's the endpoints that gives you all of our data. The data is already there. All you have to do is access it and create the components for us. So that's basically your job. Uh, and that's how we're going to approach this. We're gonna approach this from the standpoint as you're already a front-end developer. Here's the stuff you need to do to do your job, right? So I'm gonna treat you like employees. Well, sort of, <laughs> we're all gonna be employees together. All right, so, but yes, so all this stuff is um, available for us. I want at least six months vacation right from the start. I'm sorry, but there was another <laughs> candidate that had better qualifications. Oh, you already hired me, I'm oh, here. Oh, 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 sorry, did I say that out loud? Yeah, right, and you, so... you can't fire me because there's, there's some <laughs> ramifications if you do. Anyway. Oh, that's <laughs> bullying, no bullying I in had the to be. No, I just, uh, yeah, I just had to be disruptive. <laughs> All right, so um, there's, there's a bunch of functionality in here. So we can filter by, I wanna see everything that's a tour. So these are guided tours versus I wanna go on my own, it's a backpack. Um, this basically pays my airfare to get to where I wanna go, blah, 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 right? And then I can also sort by the price. So price ascending or price descending. Um, I'm Mr. Moneybag, so I wanna go over here. Not really, uh, but that would be cool to visit. Um, I'd be the one jumping on the train. That's one of my favorite things. Okay, so so here's the, oh, there's also one other thing. If I wanted to search for specific um, words in the results, so if I wanted anything that's in a cafe or maybe in the woods, forest maybe, or some forest stuff, right? So I can search for things that are relevant to me. If I wanna jump on a train, I can do that, that's the package for me, right? So we're gonna learn how to implement this stuff, which is, um, you can use not just for e-commerce, but use for any type of thing that's searchable within your site. And then I could just, if I put nothing in there and hit enter, then everything comes back. Tells me how many products come back, all that sort of stuff, all right? So that's a kind of an introduction to the application we'll be building over the next couple of weeks or a few weeks. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna be really cool to put this thing together and show you how 
Uh, now this is modeled after like patterns that are in the real world. And so you'll get a flavor of what that's like. Now this, this isn't exactly um, like everything that's out there. It's just a subset, but it gives you a pattern. It gives you all the patterns that you would need in order to create something like this. I just have to put that disclaimer out that I'm not copying anybody's code or anything like that. Um, I basically made this all from scratch. All right. So, um, and there's also some other stuff down here. We'll talk about headers and, and footers and things like that. All right. So that's the application. Any questions on it before we get into it? Or Accessibility? Is, accessibility. We can get into a little bit of that as well. Is, um, is that going to be in this app? Or is I'll, that touch, I'll touch on it. I'll okay. touch on how to do it. Um, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time implementing it everywhere, um, okay. simply because it, it's good to have accessibility. I agree, it definitely. So, um, but all that extra code is going to get tedious. It's going to eat into our time. Yeah, we'll get. So I'll a show you. For it. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you some stuff on you know what type of attributes to add to your components and things like that. Um, but we're not going to implement it absolutely everywhere, um, okay. simply because it'll just it'll just take a whole day just for that. I accept okay. that. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. But good question, good question. Okay, um, anything else? Am I talking too fast? Am I going too fast? This is a good pace. You're perfect. Perfect, I love You're it. You're wonderful. All Keep right, <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> All right, um, so next we're gonna talk, let me kill the server. Close that out. And we're gonna talk about Code Sandbox. So is anyone here has anyone here not set that up yet? Um, I should probably look at like the gallery view so I can see everyone. Um, or is, is everyone good? Did everyone start their free code sandbox login? Basically, all you gotta do is log in with your GitHub um, credentials and, and you're good. Um, so I'm gonna I'm pull over- a bunch of yeses in the chat, so. Perfect, good. So I'm gonna to go to Code Sandbox. In fact, well, I'm not gonna to go to that one. I'm just gonna go right to their homepage. Oh, I gotta move my Zoom controls all over the place because they're getting in the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here you would sign in, codesandbox.io, sign in with GitHub. And at this point, you would enter your credentials. Mine is already cached, so I'm already in. Um, but essentially what you have is on your home, if you don't have any repositories yet, this would be blank. Um, you'd just see like recent used templates, or you'd probably see something that says create a new template or create a new sandbox. Um, and then you can structure them by folders. I have some ones for careers and code. All right, so um, this is the thing we created last time, um, all kinds of cool stuff. So in here, to create a new sandbox, we just type create or click on create sandbox. And there's a bunch of different things you can do with Code Sandbox. It's not just React. So you can create uh, just vanilla JavaScript projects. You can create ones for Vue, Angular. Um, Karen, you might want to check this one out. Or, or not. That's a joke. <laughs> anyway, so there's a whole bunch of different things in here. Um, a lots of different projects that you can start. We're just obviously going to focus on React. In fact, Code Sandbox only had React templates in its infancy because that's the creator just created this tool just so he could code while he was on vacation or something like that. Um, and then it grew into this giant thing, which benefits us all. Um, that was a dirty word to me, Joey. I just want you to know that. Oh, the A word? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. There's I mean, some it's people good that there I are, know there, it. Yeah, there's some people that love Angular to death. So it's good that I know it. It just I yeah. consider it a dirty <clears> word now. There's there's no there's no bad frameworks. There's only frameworks that work for what you're trying to accomplish, right? And a lot of these things can accomplish the same type of thing. It just so happens that my preference personally is React. Um, that's why I took a job um, doing React. Um, but when, whenever, I mean, I know you, you're joking around saying you know, Angular is a bad word, um, but to be honest, um, don't try not to, um, this goes for like, for everyone when you're coming across, like um, like when you get more advanced and you hear 
when you talk to like um, people that are in your position now, let's say a couple of years from now, you're, you're mentoring someone. Um, try never to um, talk bad about frameworks or other people's code um, that they put out there because that they may love it so much that it's like, that's why they put it out there, right? Um, so we wanna get in the habit of, you can critique certain things, um, but I wouldn't say um, put them down because of it, right? So try not to talk bad about other frameworks or things like that, um, simply because you may find out that you may start a project where someone's using this framework and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I heard so many things, but then you get into it and you end up loving it. So everything has its place, everything has a usage for it. Some things do the same thing, just in different syntax, um, but just want to make sure that, um, now Karen and I are just joking around, but uh, Angular is not a bad framework. No, uh, views, it's not. Views, it, yeah, it, Vue is not a bad it, framework. It will do the same thing as React. You can right. do a single page web app with it. Yep. Um, it, it just, it, it, it's very TypeScript, it uses TypeScript. Um, yep. So not every framework is gonna be right for you or right for your project. So right. Angular does things that React was not designed for, whereas React does things that only a portion of React was, or portion of Angular was designed for, right? So there's a lot of different things that are out there. So before we get into that rabbit hole, <laughs> I'm just gonna click on React, the top. This is gonna launch a new code sandbox for me, a new repository. It's gonna make up some weird name and it's gonna compile everything. It's basically running NPM install right now and doing a new create React app for me. But you can see how much faster it did it, right? So this thing is streamlined and you don't have to do anything locally. So you could log off of your computer. You can go to a friend's computer, go into code sandbox and continue working on your project. That's the beauty of this thing. Um, I've created entire applications in code sandbox and then downloaded it and worked on it for the final touches before. I don't do that a lot. I typically only use Code Sandbox for small projects or maybe when I'm developing a new component. Um, and I just, just for me, right? It's just for a personal project or a component that I want. I've published some, um, some libraries up to NPM before and I used Code Sandbox for some of them. And it's just a quick environment to get things up and going, to hash out some ideas that you may have, play with some new libraries. Maybe you don't want to install all these things locally. And it gives you a chance to just kind of play around. It's a, it's a sandbox, it's what it's for. Um, so in here, it does the same thing as create React app. I can take this out, type hello world, and it does all that stuff for me. The same thing create, create React app does because it is create React app underneath the hood. It just got a web interface. You can see the same structure over here. In fact, it's, there's not as much in it, right? All we see is public source and our package JSON file. That's it. So from here, I'm able to, you know, create a new folder. Maybe I want to create a components folder and inside there, I'll create a new file. So my components, oops, that, ah, I can't type today, my component. And then I can work here and here, do everything I need to do um, right inside here. And if I ever wanted to, um, to pull it down and work on it locally, I can do that as well. Also, if you wanted to say import bootstrap into here, you could definitely do that. So external resources allows you to do the same thing as like when we're injecting script tags, right? Now I could come up to public, click on index HTML, and I can paste some link tags in here to bootstrap, or I can go down to external resources. In fact, they even, well, this is new. So integrated, I can add a different font. So a new Google font into here if I wanted to. Um, so if I wanted to do Acme, I don't know what that looks like, but we'll add it. I'll come over to my file explorer. I hope I already was in it. Go into source, go into my styles. Maybe I want Acme. And you can see everything change. I don't know if that's the actual Acme font or not, but it did change. So I know something happened, right? Um, so, or if I wanted, like I said, if I wanted to add bootstrap, um, this should look familiar. So if I go to get bootstrap, get started, I could take this right here, just this part, not the whole link, because it's only looking for URLs. I can add that as a resource. You can see already 
my font change. Now it's using the default font that Bootstrap likes to override everything with, which for a Mac, I believe is Helvetica, Helvetica new or something like that. Um, but anyways, so that's how we do that. So if you ever wanted to play around with that, um, you can add um, external resources, script tags, things like that. There's also dependencies and we'll get into what dependencies are. Um, you're gonna to touch upon that more in Node as well. So it's a good thing that we're gonna cover it. So our dependencies are exactly what it sounds like. It's things that our application depends on that we need in order to create the thing we wanna create. So we, right here, we can see React, React DOM and React Scripts. We already know, we've already seen React and React DOM, right? So React is used for creating elements and components. React DOM is for rendering those things to the screen. React Scripts is, is all that extra logic that does this like hot module reloading and um, launching the web browser for us and things like that. That's what React Scripts is for. There's a lot of stuff that's packed in there, right? So this project by default gives us these three dependencies. We can add new ones. So we can, we can do a search for what we want. So one of the packages I created in the past is called React Quick Table. It's a quick way to create tables in React. Um, so I can click on that. It installs it for me. I can select a different version. I can do all different types of things. So if I wanted to use a different version of React, I can choose a different version. Uh, now keep in mind, if you're using React, React and React DOM have to be on the exact same version. Otherwise they're, they're not gonna work or more likely they won't, right? So I can't use, 16.14.0 with 17.0.2. I'm gonna get all kinds of weird errors, right? So make sure that React and React DOM are the exact same version. Um, that's, that's the only requirement there from our standpoint. Everything else is the version they're at. Um, but I just wanna make sure you know that in case this version gets changed somehow. And you see all kinds of errors about versionings and stuff like that. All right, um, cool. So. In here, using Code Sandbox is how we're going to work on our homework and any type of class assignments that are aside from the um, application that we'll be building. Uh, most likely, we'll be just building the application um, for the most part. Um, I'm hoping we'll get to it by the second half of Thursday. Um, I'm hoping to get through everything that we need to do in order to get us to that point um, by, you know, by end of day tomorrow. Um, of course, we lost a day with the holiday. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get everything done there. Uh, but if we have to start the application on Monday, that's fine. We should have enough time to cover most of it or hopefully all of it. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is whenever, we're t whenever I start instructing on how to create things in React, I'm gonna be using a code sandbox repo. And the reason for that is that at the end of the day, if we wanted to save this stuff, I can just give you a link to this repository and then you could just link it and you could have a, you could fork it basically. You can fork your own. Did you guys talk about forking yet? Forking repositories? I don't think that they did. And okay. Kyle asked the question, um, should we set them to whatever version we have on our computer in case we want to download the project later? You don't have to, no. Um, it's nice because they'll be the same version, uh, but chances are the version is not going to change between now and three weeks. Uh, the version of React does not change like every other week, like some libraries might, right? It may be, you know, six months before another version comes out. Um, but it's a good question. Um, just know that it doesn't matter if what one project has a version of React versus a different entire project. What matters is that inside that project, React and React DOM have to be the same version. So you can have one project that's based on, let's say you wanted to create a component that works on older versions of React, right? So everyone from React 14 all on up to 17 can use this component. So what you would do is you would develop that component in React version 14 so that you know for a fact it works all the way up, right? So you know at least at a starting point. And then if in 17 something breaks, you know exactly what, um, what happened, right? Uh, but that's, that's getting into um, some different uh, rabbit holes there. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So I definitely want to talk about forking repositories. It's a very important for your homework. And the reason for that is that your homeworks, I've already created them and they're inside code sandboxes. 
right? Um, if I, now I created two different code sandboxes for your homework. One's gonna be kind of like the basics and the other one's gonna be something where you need to combine all those basics together to complete. That's gonna be your final homework. And that won't be due until the Sunday after our last day of class. Uh, but until so you'll have all this time from now until the end of class, until end of our classes to complete that homework. So you'll have access to it the whole time. So if you want to work on it, as we learn things and say, oh, we learned this, I can add this to, to it. Um, you can do that. So if you want that extra practice. Um, in the meantime, we'll be using a second code sandbox where we're going to, I'm going to um, kind of quiz you on all the basics that we've gone over thus far. And I tried to structure it so that between um, tomorrow and Thursday, hopefully we'll have covered everything that you need to complete the basics uh, homework. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second here. So let me just close this one. And I'm gonna show you how to fork a repository. So forking basically means you're creating a copy of somebody else's repository for yourself. So when I contributed to, co um, to Hack Upstate's code repository for implementing, um, let me go back to, Right, so when I implemented this stuff, I made a fork of the Heck Upstate repository. I did everything I needed to do in my local copy, in my local fork, and then I made a pull request. I pushed it up to my, to my repository, and then I made a pull request to Heck Upstate. It says, hey, Heck Upstate, I wanna add the module six folder and all of its contents to your repository so that your students can access it. So that's essentially what a fork does. It allows you to work on somebody else's project locally. And then when you're ready to submit your changes, you submit a pull request to, the, to their repository. And then someone from their side would review it and say, okay, yeah, these changes look good. Uh, let's pull it in. Or they'd say, no, you need to make some updates because maybe you missed some of our coding standards or something like that. And then they would say, okay, well, that's rejected for now. Let us know when you have a new pull request and we'll review that one. And in the meantime, you'd go back to your local forked repository locally on your computer, and then you'd make your changes, push them up to your repository in GitHub, and then make the pull request over to there. All right, so that's what forking is. Um, does that make sense, or do I need to explain that a little further? Are we good? We're good? Okay, yep. Yeah. So a fork just means, hey, think about a road, and there's a fork in the road, right? So somebody's repository is going left. That's the main one. Your repository is going right. Those are your changes. And at some point you want to merge. So at some point those roads come together again and they form one. So if you could think about it as a roadmap, um, that's exactly what it is, right? So that's where the whole term fork came from. At least I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. It makes sense to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll go with that. You know, make myself uh, look like I know what I'm talking about. All right, so, um, so we're going to fork these repositories in Code Sandbox. And then for your homework, you're going to submit a link to your local, to your sandbox with your changes. And I'll, let me show you how we do that. Um, oh, let's go back to Code Sandbox. So I'm going, and I'll paste these links um, in the, well, they'll be posted in Google Classroom as well. Um, your homework for tonight's gonna be a little different. It's not gonna be a Code Sandbox exercise. Um, but going forward, I just wanted to make sure that we did cover this so that we are prepared. And it allows you to, um, some chance to play with Code Sandbox in your own repos and you know, play around with it, see what you can do. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my dashboard. I'm gonna go to Careers in Code. And I have, let's start with the, okay, so there's one called React Homework. And there's one called hooks. Oh, wait, where's the, uh, hmm. Did I put it somewhere else? Right home. I'll have to check on that. I probably put it in the wrong folder, but um, React homework. This is the one that's going to be due by the end of all of our, all of our classes. So in three weeks. And the way this works is when you open it up, you'll see a navigation at the top. So home just takes you to this right here and it's still loading. Okay. Um, 
And it'll tell you right here how to use it. Say, so see the comments in each assignment uh, for instructions. And they're located in the source assignments slash number folders, right? And then just as a note, um, use this refresh icon. If you come across, let's say you come across an error because you, code, you coded something wrong um, and then you corrected it. But for some reason, this won't auto update. Just go up to refresh and try it again. So when you click this, it just basically loads your application as though you hit refresh on the entire page. Don't hit refresh on the entire page because that'll reload everything. And anything you, you may have been working on could be lost. Um, so when you're refreshing this application here, use this icon, not this one. Very important. Otherwise you'll lose your changes and you'll swear at your screen. I've done it before. <laughs> All right, so um, up here, there's four different assignments in your final homework. Assignment one, two, three, and four. Um, now this is where you're, you'll want to um, have what's supposed to show up show up. So for assignment one, if I go to assignments, go to one, I'll see there's two things in here. Your assignment JS files, so assignment one, assignment two, three, and four, that has all the instructions to get you started. All right, so inside here it says, okay, this is what I, oops, let me close this. This is what I need you to do to complete this homework. I need you to import the message component here at the top, then look at message.js for further instructions. So your first order business is to import this thing. And we'll get into that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, and then look at that particular component to figure out what you need to do with it, right? And then right down here, it says, replace the P tag below with the message component and pass it a prop named text. And we'll get into what all that stuff is. Uh, but that's what this assignment is. And eventually, it'll, I have a solutions file um, that we can look at after all the assignments are turned in. You can take a look at how I did it. There's no one right way to do this, right? So um, if you're looking for, I have to do it exactly the way it's supposed to be. Um, I'm sorry to say there's no run, one right way to do it. So, uh, but that's a good thing because you may have a different solution than someone else um, that may be more efficient and they may be like, oh, I'm, I'm glad you posted that because I would have no, I'm glad you did that because I learned something, right? So there's different ways of doing everything. Um, however, there's, there's certain things in the React that you have to do a certain way, and that revolves around syntax mostly, right? There's certain conventions that we have to follow um, in order for React to do what it's supposed to do. But in order to create this message component, there's, there's thousands of different ways that you could do this, right? Um, I'll post how I did it at the end after everything's turned in so you can compare it um, to see how someone else would have coded it, okay? But just know that um, if, if what this is asking for, if what you have on screen is doing what the instructions said, then it's good, right? So just, um, so don't fret about that. Um, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna take a look real quick at the message component. So I can see here, there's a bunch of steps we need to do. There's some extra credit. If you wanna do that, practice some more skills. Um, but in order to get this assignment, what you need to do, first of all, let's go to, um, I just want just the sandbox without any files open. So I'm gonna post a link to this in, where should I put this? I already got you covered. I put it in um, the one that's from <clears throat> the Google Classroom. Perfect, good. That's good. the one that you're doing. It's it's yep. in Slack and it's in the chat. So they should have already have access to it right now. Excellent, yeah. And it's like you said, it's already in the Google Classroom. Perfect. So um, what I want you to do is go to that link, make sure this loads and click fork. I wanna make sure everyone does this now. So I'm also gonna click fork. And you should get a confirmation at the bottom that the fork sandbox in green text, and you'll notice at the top, it says the name of it with fork. Mine doesn't, 
I'm sorry, this is Susan. I don't see a fork like you have. I see share and and then are, create sandbox. Are you signed in? Um, yep. You are. And I see in the chat, other people don't, no one sees it actually. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't have a fork. I have a knife and spoon. <laughs> so let's see, what if I make this public and save it? It should have worked otherwise. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. Hold on. I bet you it's because it's not public. You can't do it. So let me just do this. Let me, let me go back. I just didn't want it um, public accessible to everyone before class started in case anyone well, got confused on it. Uh, so let's do this. Let me, and by the way, this is how you make um, nothing hidden here. This is just whether or not you can see it or not, but it looks like I probably need to make this public. So we're each going to have our own place to do this and submit it from. Yes. So we're not really changing anything that you're not changing mine. Point. Yeah, you're not okay. changing mine. So um, no, you're going to get a look. You can't because you probably have it locked down. So I don't have to be concerned. Well, you literally can't so. unless you yeah. are signed in as me. Um, yeah, anything okay. you do in this browser, you can't. That, yep. That's good security. Yeah, yep. I just I get this fear of like, like I just lost. I I know where they are now, but a whole bunch of files went bye bye, and I was working. Yeah. On in today, fact, so if like, you were to oh, go okay. to, if you were to go to, okay, so. Everyone, uh, maybe just refresh your screen and see if the fork shows up. Where is it on the screen that we should Top see? Top right. Oh, we're looking at the right. I was looking to the left where all the file names were. Okay, got it. Yep, so up top right, you should see share, fork, and create sandbox. I'm getting a lot of no's, and even I don't see it myself, Joey. Okay, I that's weird. Okay, let me- Share um, and create sandbox, but- Let me work on that. That's interesting. Mm, okay. Yeah, let me look into that. Um, cause I've never had a problem with that. That's really weird. Okay. Uh, but anyways, let me just demonstrate it so that once I get it figured out, um, you can be up and running. So you're going to click fork. It's going to show at the top. It's going to say forked, right? And you'll notice that the URL changed and then I can come in here. And the first thing you want to do is just make a change somewhere, right? Just say hi whatever it happens to be, you can see it show up down here. And then once that's saved, that link is, well, I mean, you could do it before making a change, but this link is what you're going to post as your homework. And that'll allow me to see uh, what you've done. All right. So I'll figure that out tonight. See what's going on there. Um, there's probably some setting that's new in Code Sandbox that I didn't check. Um, actually, let me try this. Let me see. Let me paste this one. And so if everyone go here, I put it in CIC students C2. Go there and see if you see the fork. I'm not seeing it. No? Okay. Hmm. And I'm everybody else is saying no as well. Let's do this. So you but you see the repo on the screen, right? You see all the stuff? Yeah. Go into just under layout, just type hello and click uh, command S for, for save. I want to see what happens.
I got a pop-up message saying forked sandbox with green for to show it was successful. All right. Yeah. So, so green, up, green, but I don't have green. it on the oh no, now it is up there. It is on my interface. Yes. It must be that they have to make a change in order for the fork to show. Yeah, I'm wondering if that fork button is for your local thing. Like that's for you if you want to fork your own thing. Yeah. Um because in the back of my mind, I just realized if you make a change to someone else's thing, it should force you to like try to fork it, right? Because you can't make changes to mine, right? Right. So, yeah. all right, great. So everyone's got the, <laughs> got the homework forked um, and that should show up. So if you go up to the top right and click dashboard, that should show up. Oh, yeah. So here, this one right here was the forked one for me. Oh, all my stuff's showing up in here. Great, cool. I just put it in the wrong folder. All right. Um, so is everyone good? Everyone have that forked and showing up in their dashboard? All right. So that's how you're going to tackle the exercises we're going to talk about tomorrow as well for the homework for the rest of the week. Okay. Um, but I'll get into that tomorrow because I want I don't want to uh, have, have anyone go in there and um, get confused by some of the uh, instructions just yet. So uh, let's see, we're at 8.32, so I think we're at time. Um, are there any further questions before we log off for tonight? Um, also make sure you guys do the, your daily um, surveys as well. I just put that in Slack, the survey. Perfect, thank you. Uh, but that's where we're gonna stop for tonight. Tomorrow, we're gonna go over, uh, I have a list actually. We're going to go over elements again. Uh, we already know how to render them. So we're not going to talk about too much about rendering uh, because Create React App and Code Sandbox, they handle it for us. Um, and we already saw the basics of how that happens. React DOM render, tell it what you want to render and where. So that's that's really all we really need, need to know. Um, we're going to talk about importing and exporting. Very important, right? Uh, we're going to talk about folders and file naming. Actually, we already talked about that, but uh, that we're going to talk a little bit more about file naming and how that affects our components and our folder structure and what that tells other developers about our code. Um, we're going to talk about JSX because we're going to be using it. Um, and then we'll go over components, composition, which we'll get into, um, styling, and then props and children. And that may sound like a lot, but they all kind of tie together. Um, and it's going to go probably a little faster than you realize. Um, but we'll, we'll take it as fast as or slow as we need to. Uh, but that's kind of like a precursor for tomorrow. Um, so just make sure you fill out the um, survey for tonight. And if there's any last questions, um, maybe just get them out now. We're good for tonight. All right, excellent. So I will see you all again tomorrow. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll do some react fun. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Karen. See you all later. Peace. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Have a good night. Susan, if you don't get that, um, let me know and we can, if you want to get together with me tomorrow, she, she was saying that she couldn't see it in the dashboard, Joey. If they're in recently viewed, like she's saying, yes. Okay. So, yeah, then so you're, all right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it wasn't there. It was weird. It like didn't come up immediately. Yeah, yeah you may ha need to refresh your browser or something like that, but just make sure you make a change to it and save it. Okay. Which sounds like you already did, so. Thank you. All right. All right, have a great night. All right, have a good night, guys.